People who have had a stalker, how did you realize you were being stalked? For more such content, please like and subscribe our channel Thread Tonic. Part 1. Account 1. It was my ex. When we broke up, it was all very dramatic. And he got on a bus across the country the same day for whatever reason and sent a long message from the bus ending with, This is not goodbye. I said, Yes, it is. Good luck. Two years later, I met my now husband, and I suppose he moved back after three years I started seeing him everywhere. He followed the two of us around Walmart for 45 minutes until I just posted up near a security guard and slipped out as he tried to wait for me to get away from the security guard. Then I saw him wandering around near my mother's house, but I had at that point moved in with my husband. Then I saw him outside of my work. He was clearly trying to get the courage to come in, and he was also very clearly high. Some of the regular police officers came in by chance for their coffee, and he left when they arrived. Then he figured out the general location where I was living, and I saw him sort of wandering around a few times. I didn't go home when I saw him. I went and sat in a public place for a few hours. Then I changed places of work, and I saw him outside about three times. I was near a major transportation hub, so I tried to ignore it. But when he started doing the pacing, tweaking, chain-smoking thing again, I figured I ought to do something, so I waited for a family friend I knew would be in, who was pretty domineering, and I knew would go to bat for me and let him know who it was and what he was doing. He went outside and told my ex off, I suppose, and scared him, I guess, because he left quite quickly. My family friend was a bus driver, so I gave him a picture, and he shared it with some drivers along my regular route. And as long as I stuck to that route, the few more times I saw him trying to get on my bus, we drove right past him, or the wrong door opened to let people off and not let him on. We finally moved again, and I quit my job because I had been bouncing around the same chain and was easy to find. Since then, I have seen him once, but he didn't see me, and I think it was unrelated because he actually bought something I just sat in the camera room and watched till he left. It's been an additional five years now, so I assume he has figured himself out. I got an air of doom every time I saw him. He was kind when we dated, never abusive, but he was anti-drugs and anti-smoking, and so seeing him high and things like that set off alarm bells. I know he was not well when he returned. I don't know what would have happened had he gotten close to me. Maybe nothing. But every bone in my body was screaming danger. So I trusted my gut and took steps to maintain distance. And I was okay. The police wouldn't have done anything. No threats were uttered. And we were always in public, but all in all, it turned out okay. Account 2. It's scary how much our gut can sense when we don't know why or how. One time, I walked outside the mall with Baby, and I just got this sick pit feeling. And when I looked up, there was a van driving through all the parking lot lanes. I thought I was crazy, but I just went back inside for a few minutes, until I didn't see that van anymore. The next day, I saw on the news that a woman was kidnapped with her baby at the local mall and they found her raped and killed along with her baby. It seriously haunts me to this day, and I always follow my gut or instincts, whatever you say it is. Account 3. It started while I was still in high school. He would be in a few of my classes, and we would occasionally see each other around town, a very small, rural town. It slowly turned into him, showing up at some of my friend group's hangout spots and saying that I had inspired him to start looking into similar hobbies. We thought it was kind of weird, but just brushed it off and avoided him. Flash forward a couple weeks into the start of summer vacation, he had found or followed me to all of my favorite places and my work. Even though both were sometimes towns over from our own, I would see his car at parks where I did outdoor painting at my place of work as well as at friends' houses. And he would drive past the house of the family I nannied for during my days on. I thought it was creepy and told local authorities. But they told me not to worry. This went on for the rest of high school, and up until graduation, I didn't tell anyone what university I was going to and lied, claiming it was one hours away from mine. He was accepted and attended there while I left for another. He found out after a semester that I wasn't there and showed up at my dorm hall. 
He tried to break in and convince me and other people in the building to just let him in. I hid out in another girl's room until my friend was able to pick me up and take me to her boyfriend's off-campus apartment. I found out he was arrested the next morning for assaulting an RA, I called, and showed them the evidence I had for his persistent stalking, and finally filed a restraining order. He just got released a few months ago, and I have never been more nervous, I'm just happy. My current job and living area has amazing security, and they all have pictures and his information to be safe. I may be paranoid, but better safe than end up on a true crime podcast. Account 4. I had a stalker in high school and he didn't make it a secret. We were friends at first, kind of talking romantically, but I was very shy when it came to relationships or being physical. We had never even kissed before when he asked if he could send a song he wrote about me. It made me very uncomfortable, and I asked him not to send it. But he did anyway. I expressed my discomfort and tried to continue the friendship, but it was just not working because he would still write me poems and send me weird songs, he started following me to my classes, even though his were on the other side of school, but he wouldn't speak to me at all. It was insanely uncomfortable. This continued for weeks. He started sending me mean messages anonymously online and sending me songs with scary titles. He sent me that Smith song, The More You Ignore Me, The Closer I Get Every Single Day, Sometimes Multiple Times. Then one day at lunch, he gave me a handwritten poem, and I can't remember what all it said. But the end was something about how he wanted to watch me get eaten alive by sharks. While friends, I had told him sharks were my biggest fear, I showed my teacher the poem, and she freaked out and took it to the guidance counselor. She knew all the previous incidents, so the letter made her worried. Especially how his handwriting changed when he was writing about me dying, I ended up getting called into a meeting with the principal, a guidance counselor, and the teacher I told. They even called my mom in, and we all sat down and talked about what would be the best thing to do. The principal was really nervous he would do something crazy, so he said I should just avoid him as much as possible and be polite any time we may interact. Basically, how I was already handling it, I'm not sure if they ever spoke to him about it, but the last interaction I had with him still creeps me out to think about. I was up very late and received a text from him. Why are you up so late? You should get ready for bed. He had been to my place once before, and I lived very close to the school. I'll always wonder if he was outside my house that night. Account 5. My wife did. It became a real problem. He was a maintenance man at the school where she taught. She was throwing out a lot of old, damaged books. He asked if could have them for his kids, of course. After that, he wanted to always be there, wherever my wife was. He was always sweeping or cleaning near her room. Then one day in the winter, my wife got a flat right after leaving school. It was getting dark, and her new best friend is there to fix it. While changing the tire, he started asking sexual questions. He wanted to know if she ever had a black man. Of course. She said nothing. It got worse, and the school administration was ignoring it. I was now going way out of my way to take her and to pick her up from school. She was scared. Then he said something to her while she was eating in the cafeteria. She lost it. She just started screaming and crying for him to leave her alone. They sent her home for a few days, paid leave. Since the school was no help, I went to see two school board members I knew but not well. I told them that I had hired an attorney and would be suing the school district unless my wife felt safe. They moved the custodian to another school, but it took months before my wife felt safe. The custodian got in trouble at the next school and was arrested. We never heard from him again. Count six. He followed me home from church. He left long letters on my car every night for about a week. He was a lot older than me. The police spoke with him, and he left town. I know how lucky I am that it was so simple. Edit. It was a small college town. I only know what the police told me, which was that they located him through the letters and the description of his car. Found out he was not a resident, and told him there would be charges if he didn't move on. I realized he had followed me home the first day, so I parked at a different house and even walked into the backyard to try to throw him off. I didn't have a garage, so when he came back to the neighborhood, 
It wasn't hard for him to see my car, and he started leaving the letters. Account 7. Last year, my girlfriend was getting emails, texts, and DMs from a no-name account asking intrusive and weird questions. Are you in an open relationship? Random, sexually explicit stuff? She just blocked and moved on. Shocker to me? This is apparently very normal for women, and it fucking sucks. Anyway, one time we were in a mall, and she noticed this lanky guy was following us. Again, I'm oblivious. She mentions to me that she thinks it's the guy who has been harassing her for weeks. We leave. She gets an email to her business email, that night telling her that her boyfriend is cheating on her and flirting with other girls on Goodreads and how does that make her feel. If she wants to know more, she can meet him at a park that we spend a lot of our time together at. She now knows that he lives in our area and has all the information about her. She stops going for runs at night. She stops shopping by herself, etc. Ah, locks down every account. Doesn't leave the house alone. She's just angry. I'm angry too. I ended up looking this guy up and realized that we had a mutual friend. Just an actor that I had filmed a commercial with. I send her a message asking if she knows this guy and explain the situation. I see that she's read it but doesn't respond. So for a few months, my GF doesn't hear anything from him, and we just decide that it's over with. Then I get a message from the actor. Apparently, she did know the stalker. It was her ex-boyfriend. They had an abusive relationship, and he was really jealous, I guess. He focused in on me because we would recommend each other books on good reads. He then decided that he was going to get even with me by stalking my girlfriend. The actor is embarrassed and is saying shit like, I understand if you never want to talk to me again, which just breaks my heart. We offer to help her out. But she said that she has a restraining order and that it's fine. She did contact him, and he said he'll stop and never contact us again. We thought we were fine, that it was over with. Then... One day he sends me a long IG DM trying to explain his behavior and saying that he wants to talk. I ignore it. He keeps sending messages. I keep ignoring it. I think he's done now. But I'll never forgive this guy for making my partner feel incredibly unsafe for a year. TLDR, some guy stalked and harassed my GF because I liked his ex's Goodreads challenge. Account 8 I went on three dates with a guy, but didn't quite feel like there was a connection. Tried to let him down gently, as he hadn't had a girlfriend before. I was happy to remain friends, as he was a friendly guy. I just wasn't attracted to him. This was about May. I've learned a few lessons from this one. He added me on Facebook, which was okay, as we'd communicate through there sometimes. A month or so goes by and he turns up at my house unannounced, saying he was in the area. He actually lived 45 minutes away and decided to go shopping in my town. I wasn't home at the time. My brother messaged me to let me know, and then the guy messaged me too. I apologized and said I was out. Won't be home for several hours. That's fine. He went home. He'd pick me up from my house for the third date. A few weeks later, I had accepted an event invitation on Facebook to a car show my mechanic was hosting. The guy turned up at this car event whilst I was there with my brother and some friends, and I didn't really know what to do about it. My brother kept him entertained, and I managed to exchange pleasantries but stayed with my friends. I went for lunch with my friends, and when I got home, I found out that the guy had gone to my house again. This time, he had left some chocolates, a towel with my name embroidered on it, and a letter. In the letter, he explained how he was in love with me, wanted to have children with me, get married, and get a house together. Oh, and the towel was so I could think about him when I dry myself with it. Again, I turned him down because I wasn't into him. A few months later, I'm seeing someone else and he's over at my house. This guy turns up again, unannounced, trying to get hold of me. Why didn't he just message or call me? But luckily, my brother is aware I've got the new guy with me, so he tells the guy I'm not home. I had to explain to him in a message that if he wants to see me, he actually needs to contact me first, not just turn up unannounced and expect me to be available. It made it much more difficult to want to be friends with him as it was becoming a bit overbearing, and I didn't know what he'd try next, so I had to cut him off. He tried contacting me through several methods, he even changed his number pretending to be someone else. 
He finally stopped after a year and a half. Account 9. I caught him jerking off in the window. Long story short, my husband and I moved into our new home. Weird guy directly behind us was weird in the window. Turns out he was jerking off. Stalked online, got my number. Told me this was basically God's plan. He prayed for a beautiful woman, and here I was. How my kids were gonna be his. Wild shit. Account 10. I have a weird kind of related story. There is a man in my town that for the last 15 years I see him constantly. Almost everywhere I go, he's there. At least three times a month. The grocery store, the corner store, the gas station, Walmart, the liquor store. Occasionally we catch each other's eye and look at each other like, you again? And kind of laugh it off. It has come to be a little bit of a joke where I will come home and tell my husband, guess who I saw at the store today? The only catch? He's always at these places first, so it's me who looks like the stalker. Account 11. I worked as a secretary at an adult school when I was 18. An adult student kept bothering me, taking pictures of me outside the office, etc. I quit that job and got him banned from the school fast forward three years later. I'm in a relationship, six months pregnant, and I'm working at a doctor's office. A police officer shows up and tells me I've had a private investigator on me for a few weeks but he reported his client to the police because his client said he was my husband. But the PI, after following me for a few weeks, figured out he wasn't and was stalking me. He went to jail for a few days, never heard from him again. It's been 19 years. Freaky ass shit. Account 12. I was stalked by a guy I went to high school with. He was the kid everyone thought would shoot up our school if he could. Everybody would pick on him and make fun of him for being a loser but I never did. His mom was a teacher at our school and I loved her. So I never wanted to upset her by being mean to her son. I guess he took my niceness as me having a crush on him and he became obsessed with me. He would stick love notes in my locker all the time and he made it a point to come visit his mom's class when he knew I'd be in there. I was her teacher's assistant because I was so close with his mom. I never talked to her about it because I didn't want it to be awkward. I was never actually scared of this guy until he started coming to my house in the middle of the night. My dad worked swing shift, and he would be gone a lot at night. This guy would sneak out of his house late at night and come knock on my window or creep around my house. I had to call the cops a couple of times, and at that point, I decided I had to talk to his mom. His parents were super apologetic and said they'd take care of it, but he still wouldn't leave me alone. I got married young and moved away from my hometown and didn't think I'd ever have to see him again. One day he sent me a friend request on MySpace and sent this big long message saying how sorry he was for ever making me feel scared or uncomfortable, so I decided to accept his request. I thought, maybe he's actually grown up and changed. At first he seemed like he genuinely just wanted to be friends, but then he started leaving creepy comments on pictures of me and my kids. The final straw was when his wife messaged me and told me to leave her husband alone. She told me that she knew I was in love with him and that I needed to stop messaging him. Apparently this is what he told her when she caught him creeping on my pictures. I showed her screenshots of the messages he had sent me and the comments on my pictures and blocked them both. He has tried to friend me three times from different profiles on Facebook, and I've had to block all of them. I hope to hell I never see him again. Account 13. He wasn't subtle about it. He threatened me by phone and email, followed a moving truck to my new apartment, ignored police instructions to stop contacting me multiple times, then contacted me through other people, showed up in random places in my new city. It only stopped after he got arrested for assault on someone else, and ultimately moved to a different city, where he was again arrested for assault. That last part I only know because I was regularly looking him up on court records to see if he was free. Account 14. Had this woman who would walk into the store I worked at just to talk to me. After a while, I got creeped out and started doing inventory in back whenever someone spotted her walking in. I swear she looked more like Annie Wilkes than Kathy Bates did. Used to see her standing outside the library, waiting to get in. She would be cheerful, but then utter a string of F-bombs, or MF-bombs if she felt slighted in any way, still with that cheerful yet dead-eyed look on her face. Account 15. 
I've never had the threatening stalker, but when I was much younger, I did have one of those softcore stalkers. It was the custodian in my building at work. We had a glass front door, and he would lean against it while I was at the front desk. He would watch me as I walked to my car at the end of the day. He didn't ever really speak to me, though. One day I entered the building in a skirt, and he was on his hands and knees cleaning the baseboards, which put his head about the same level as my nether. I passed by him in the hall, giving him as wide a berth as I could, hugging the opposite wall, really, when he looks up and says, Something sure smells good? I bolted to my office suite and said to my boss, I feel like I need a hug and a shower. My boss, my former mentor, my now dear friend, threw his hands up when I told him what the stalker said and said, That's it. I've had it. First, he tried to handle things professionally and wrote the property manager who said that I must have been mistaken and he was complimenting my perfume, which I didn't wear because another co-worker was allergic and it was a small space. When that didn't work, he decided to patiently lie in wait. Then the next time, the stalker went to look for me at the front desk. Boss sits me elsewhere in the office and confronts him. He never told me what he said or how the conversation went, but the stalker quit shortly thereafter. Part 2. Account 1. Apologies for the length, but here we go. Mine was much different than most people's. I met mine at church, but found out later he had followed me there. Apparently, he lived a couple houses down from my ex-boyfriend, and this dude showed up at my church within a week of my breakup with my ex. He was always wearing an army jacket, so I thought he was a veteran struggling with severe PTSD by the way he would act, found out later that he actually had a developmental disorder and the army jacket had been his father's. He followed me around my church for a while, and I honestly didn't think much of it. He seemed harmless. My friends would always joke about it when they'd see him looking for me if he lost where I was. If I went to the bathroom, he'd be standing outside the door when I came out. This went on for a couple years. We were always really nice to him, dumb on our part, but we didn't know any better. And we would invite him to our cookouts and hangouts, cause he could drive and stuff. One night I was at my friend's house having a girl's night, her husband and our other friend went out so we could be alone. This dude showed up at the front door of my friend's house at midnight holding a weed whacker. Seriously, can't make this up. When I asked him what he was doing there, he said, Can I weed? Eat the backyard. I was super confused because, again, it was the middle of the night and my friend lived on a big lot, so it was pitch black outside. We told him no and asked him to leave, so he did. A couple weeks later, my friend and I were sitting with him in our church auditorium. It was just the three of us in there while we were waiting for my friend's husband to get out of a meeting. My friend said she needed to use the bathroom, and so she left me alone with him. I didn't really think anything of it. He'd never tried anything before, other than be a little too much in my space, so I thought it would be fine for a couple minutes. First thing he does is tell me that I look tense. I was like, oh, I'm fine. Trying to hide that fact that I was uncomfortable with him saying that, he proceeded to get up, stand behind me, and place his hands on my shoulders to massage them. I was still trying to be nice at this point by saying, No, I'm okay. Thanks. Please stop. That was when he started really apply pressure and I started to panic. So I struggled to get out of his grip, but the more I struggled, the harder he grabbed onto my shoulders and it hurt so bad. My friend came back at just the right time and yelled at him before ripping him off of me. She started screaming at him and he left angry. We didn't see him or hear of him again. After that, not until my friend called me a couple years later, telling me the guy had been arrested. I asked for the story, and my friend sent me a link to an article. It said that the dude had been arrested for stabbing his neighbor's dogs to death. I think only one actually died, but the second one almost died. He was suspected of multiple other dog deaths in his neighborhood. He had gotten arrested, bonded out, got put on an ankle monitor, didn't charge it, went off the grid for six hours. And when they found him, they said that they found mutilated cats, raccoons, and possums in the surrounding block around his house. The article also said he had allegedly set fire to a previous girl's house when she rejected him, and another girl he threatened to kill her whole family.
I feel like my situation with him wasn't near as bad as those other girls. But I'm still so glad that he's in prison now. They won't let him out early because they said he's a danger to society. TLDR, followed by someone for years, nearly assaulted. Dude gets arrested for being an animal mutilator. Account 2. He offered to bring me home after the club. I thought it was nice. But then he knew where I lived. For the next three months, he was always there when I left my house. He was suddenly on the campus when he studied somewhere else. A few times a week, he would be standing and waiting in front of my door, asking the neighbors for my spare keys because he was my boyfriend and he locked himself out. Fortunately, they didn't believe him. He left letters, roses, coffee, and one day a knife. A lot of times when he was waiting in front of my door, I would be sitting in my apartment in silence. Hoping that he didn't hear me and would leave soon, he was sometimes there until 3 a.m. I, of course, blocked him from the beginning. Told him many times to leave. He said that he could hear our babies and I would rob us of our future together. I talked to the police. They couldn't do anything because he didn't broke a law. One day he called from a different number. My friend picked up and just screamed at him to leave me alone. And then he did. He wasn't in front of my door anymore. Not on campus. Not in the supermarket. Just gone. But still today I get panic attacks if I see a man with his body time and brown curly hair in the corner of my eye. Count three. My mom had an ex who left her for his ex-wife because his kids weren't handling the divorce well. At least that's what he told us. He would call my mom all the time, knock on the door, timed when the dog would be let out to know when to show up, leave love letters on my mom's car at work. My mom got a restraining order on him. That didn't stop there, though. Then his dad started to do all those things for him. Luckily, my mom was able to put one out on his dad as well. Then started seeing my stepdad. We moved in with him, they married, and she changed her name. Twelve wire hours passed. Apparently, he went to prison briefly and got out. Somehow found out my mom got married, her new name, then started blowing her FB up. My mom took record of it and blocked him. On FB, he was more threatening her, but I'm pretty sure at this point if he came around, my stepdad could probably handle him. I know I could but they live several cities away and are super private, so I really don't think he'd be able to find them. Account 4. IDK if it's considered stalking, but this girl I was dating in high school's mom hired a private investigator to follow me around. When I went to meet her parents, her mom showed me pictures of me smoking cigars, buying beer, dipping, and even one of me working on my car. I ended up breaking up with her a few months later, but I still never understood why a grown-ass adult would hire a P.I. to follow around a 16-year-old. Account 5. There was this weird dude that used to call my house when I was 16. One day when my sister, 13, she answered the landline and heard a man start asking her questions about who she was, name and age, etc. My sister thought it was one of her friends messing around and didn't think much of it. Later that day, my mom got answered the phone to the same dude asking for the girl. He proceeded to call about 50 times a day from three different London landlines. He never a spoke to my sister after the first time, but always asked for hair. He was vulgar and threatening when my dad spoke to him. In the end, we had to pay to have all three of the numbers blocked for six months or so. The police didn't care. If I recall, it's because he was calling from hundreds of miles away. Even though I never spoke to him, it was just so unsettling hearing the phone ring so often. I think we unplugged it a lot of the time before getting him blocked. We have no idea who he was or why he harassed us like that. I imagine maybe he just spent all day calling numbers until people answered. Account 6. He used to be my friend and would attempt to call, text, or message me nonstop after I stopped being friends with him. He also claimed he had people who would keep an eye on me. I had to get a new phone number, block every fake account he created to get past other blocks and keep people who knew me in the loop about him. Finally, after threatening to kill me when everything came to a head, a.k.a. after I got sick of his weird obsessive behavior, followed by homophobic rants when I called him out on it, he managed to call me from another unknown number and threatened to kill himself if I didn't. Give him a chance. Yes, romantically, despite him claiming to be straight.
I blocked him again, and I have no idea if he did what he claimed he would do or not. I don't want to know either. Count seven. I have been stalked by several guys. The scariest one was my ex. He would wait outside my apartment in his car. If I wasn't there, he was at my work waiting in the parking lot. He would call me at random times from random numbers. He would threaten my friends asking them what my location was. He would contact my friends through their social media since I didn't have any accounts. He threatened a neighbor of mine and almost broke my door down. My landlord ended my contract early because he feared for my safety. It got to the point that I thought he was going to kill me. Worst part of this, after two weeks of our breakup, he was already with someone else, so he was literally doing this while dating another person. It was three years of terror. Count eight. I woke up one morning and caught him peering in my window. I got police involved, and honestly, I think he just got more stealthy until he found someone else to obsess over. Account nine. I'm not sure if this is labeled as stalking, but it's a form of harassment. So when I, 18F, was 16, I started working at Walgreens. There was a customer who would come in the store and harass me while I would be trying to work. He was living in a halfway house, place where inmates go after prison, across from the Walgreens. He started coming in, and then it just kept getting worse and worse. First, he kept coming in when I was working evening shift. And then when he noticed that I had been working morning shift, he started coming in in the morning. He never bought anything either. I think he only bought one thing in the beginning. He came into the store one day and yelled my name and just stared at me while I was ringing up a customer and I said hello. And then he says that he doesn't care about my attitude and that he's going to continue coming into the store. Another incident. He came into the store and just stood in my face for almost a minute, just staring at me, which made me feel uncomfortable. Then I said something along the lines of, can I help you with something? And then he kept asking over and over again why I don't talk to him anymore. And his words were slurred like he was intoxicated or something. And he was leaning over the register. I don't have any personal relationships with any of the customers. I try to keep everything work-related when talking with customers. The only thing I've ever said to any customer was, Welcome to Walgreens, and Do you have a Walgreens card? Or have a nice day, so I'm not sure what he's talking about. Then he said, I am a grown woman, which I was not. I was 16 going on 17 at the time. He kept coming in every time I was scheduled. He kept asking why I don't talk to him anymore. I think there was one time he did buy a drink in the middle of him stalking me. I asked him if he has a Walgreens card or if he needs a bag and he ignored that and asks why I don't talk to him anymore. It was very, very frustrating. Customers seen him come in and yell things at me and asked, was I okay? He even asked a former employee about me, asking was I working that day. He kept causing scenes and he would always do it when I was on the register by myself. He never did it when I was around another co-worker, but he did harass me around customers, causing big scenes like we dated or something. The last incident, he came in, but a security guard, manager, and another employee were at the register having a conversation with me. He just walked a little down the aisle and left out 10 seconds later. Mind you, this was over a course of about five months. I no longer work there. Account 10. It was my ex. We were also separated for a year. My friend and I were celebrating Galantines. Valentines. For friends, basically. She invited me to the restaurant she was working at. After her shift, we had some dinner and drinks. Then we were going to a club nearby. She posted a story on Instagram and tagged my account. I didn't have my ex on my Instagram. But he followed my friend, which I didn't know. This is important to remember. We finished up and then went to the club where we met a mutual friend of ours. The evening progressed nicely, or so it seemed. Decided to take a break from dancing and went to the washroom where I checked my phone. From another account, my ex sent a video of me dancing saying, Is this you? You know, I know a lot of people and someone recognized you. I recognized those shoes. I was terrified. I calmly explained to my friends the situation and so we agreed to leave. I looked around the club as we left, and I didn't see him anywhere. 
We went back to the restaurant my friend worked at, told my friends everything was good and I just need to go home. My one friend left. The other called a taxi for me and waited with me. When the taxi arrived, we left the restaurant and my ex was like, what's up? He literally was waiting outside the restaurant for me. Then because my friend was a guy, he started a scene outside the restaurant yelling around, accusing me of cheating. I never cheated on him. He cheated on me, hence why I left. It was very embarrassing. The restaurant manager even came outside and had to intervene to prevent him from attacking my friend. I got home safe, and the next morning I filed a police report. Turned out he saw my friend's story, followed us from when we left the restaurant, came into the club, and took videos of me, then proceeded to follow me back to the restaurant. Still gives me chills thinking about it. Account 11. When I was going to university, this one girl came on to me. I let her know I was not interested, but she didn't like that answer. She figured out my schedule, what car I drove, when and where I ate lunch, when I got to campus, and she sent me creepy messages like, I can't wait to run my fingers through your hair. I was really worried she was going to do something to me, but luckily she didn't. Transferred to a technical institute at semester and never saw her again. Account 12. I lived about three blocks from the bus stop when I was in elementary school, and my mom would sometimes forget to pick me up so I'd just walk home. It was only two turns so I knew the way and was used to the route from being on a bike with friends, so it wasn't a big deal to me. My house was considered part of the hood, so shady stuff went on, but there were lots of good folks on our street who would do yard work, so I was relatively safe to travel because of all the eyes. About halfway home, I noticed a white van, fucking cliche, parked on the street. Okay, no big deal, whatever. It's a car. Then when I reached my street, I noticed the van out of the corner of my eye was parked a few houses back from me. It was definitely the same van because I recognized the plate. That was a little weird and too weird for me to be comfortable. So I kept walking until I reached the house of someone who would let me take strawberries from their garden. Luckily, it was only two houses down from where I was standing, so I wasn't in any danger of getting grabbed. I made up a story of wanting to know more about their garden, which was huge and filled their entire backyard with pathways and cobblestone and benches and shit, and they let me into their backyard. I ate some strawberries and peeked over the backyard fence to see the white van slowly go by where I was. Luckily, they couldn't see me, but I saw the driver, and they had a hat and sunglasses on, and camera around their neck. I was a kid, so I didn't really react or comprehend the situation fully, just went home through the back. All of the backyards were separated, but if you climbed over the back fence, there was a space in between a really long fence that went down the entire street. I used that space a lot to travel around between my friends' houses and to just explore. It made for a great getaway. I did find out on the news that kids were being kidnapped, and the kidnapper had taken nude photos of all of them. They had found their hub, where they took the photos and had put them all over the walls. I don't know if they found the guy or not. It was about a dozen children, all under ten. From then on, my older siblings would walk me to and from the bus stop when my mom didn't. Account 13. I've been stalked a few times, but I'll tell about one stalker. I used to play Terra all the time. Back when I was a freshman and sophomore in high school, I grew to have many online friends from the game, but grew close to the people in a 18. Guild I joined. The guild I was in was a fairly big guild at the time, so you eventually had little clicks here and there. Nothing new. There was one guy who was very off, though. Very, very off. I logged in one day and had near instantly received a whisper from him after I greeted everyone who was online. He said hello, that he was new, asked how my day was going, etc. And just general stuff. It got weird when he became insistent on role-playing. I declined every time on that day because I was very ill. I just wanted to play a little alone until I decided to sleep again. But every single day after that, he never stopped with pressuring me for role-play. Not only that, he had a weird obsession with horses. Nothing wrong with liking horses, but I draw the line when it becomes weird, as in sexual. He would notice I would role play with others and not him, so he began to get demanding. Soon enough, I blocked him. At that time, when you blocked someone, it was just their character, and you'd see you blocked made-up name appear on your screen. 
but the person's other characters could still be seen and they could talk to you through them. Basically, you had to block all characters, but you would know when they deleted a character you blocked BC. It would say you unblocked them. And that's what happened. I blocked this guy over and over, but he kept deleting his character, remaking new ones, coming back into the guild and finding me. Even my alt characters, he'd find me. Soon, he found my Steam, my Facebook, my Instagram. He kept trying to interact and talk to me for six months. I told my guild leader she did nothing. I reported the characters and accounts and kept blocking, but he kept coming back. Before he disappeared, he found what he thought was my address. It wasn't mine. It was in my town, but not my address. I was very careful about where I went after that for about another six months and got scared off Terra. Account 14. Had a stalker when I was about 16, 17 years old. They somehow got a hold of my number and would text me at all hours of the day. Sometimes just to let me know they knew when I had people over or tell me that I'm coming home awfully late. They would also tell me of all the other times they saw me throughout the day. I would block the number, and they would just keep using new numbers to text me on. I ended up filing a police report but never got anything out of it. Cops even had the nerve to joke around and say, It's because you're pretty. You should be flattered. Found out it was a childhood friend's father, posted him publicly on social media with photos that put things to an end. Account 15. He added me on MSN Messenger when I was 14 and pretended to be someone I knew. Eventually, he started slipping, like forgetting he gave me a fake name, and I got weirded out and stopped talking to him, eventually blocking him. He somehow got my mobile number when I was given one when I was 15 and even yelled at my father for answering one of his many calls and telling him to piss off. He then found me like 10 minutes after I created a MySpace profile a year later. I deleted it immediately because he had a photo, and he was way older than me. I made a new one a few months later, and he found me on that. He has subsequently found me on every social media I've ever had, except this one, so I just stopped using it. To my knowledge, I've never seen him in real life, but he knows shit about me. It's really weird. He has always acted like we've known each other and been close. Sometimes he messages and acts like we used to be. Together. From his social media that I could see without adding him, he seems to be now married with two kids. Yet he still finds me. I last got a message on Insta during lockdown from a fake profile he created. It's been half my life, almost. I always joke to friends that if I get murdered... Tell the cops to look for the bald man named Joel. Account 1. Knew I was being stalked. After an individual I went on a date with showed me picture albums with photos he had collected over the years of me in newspaper and magazine articles, it then catapulted into him going into a psychiatric hospital because he threatened to kill himself, me and my disabled brother, when he refused to accept I didn't want a relationship with him. I ended up moving out of town taking a break job, and my brother with me. I was a director at a non-profit for individuals with disabilities. We had a lot of great volunteers. One of them was a pretty good guy who always, for years, was super helpful and great with the kids. Always received the Volunteer of the Year Award, kind, nice, a bit socially awkward, but seemed like a nice man. Over time, he and I became friends, not intimate friends, but friendly. He asked me out for a date, and I thought, why not? Date was okay, but I wasn't super attracted to him. We kept in touch because of the non-profit. Fast forward, guy starts to offer to help me out with small things at my house. Again, thinking, we are just friends. Should be okay. I said yes. One day proceeds to show me. Picture albums of newspaper clippings that he had collected over the years, but all the clippings were with me in them then starts to tell me the feelings he's had for me over the past years and how he can't get over me. At that point, I knew there was a serious issue. I had been being stalked, and I had invited the stalker into my home. I calmly and very nicely tell him as much as I appreciate his help and friendship. I don't share the same feelings. I also told him to seek out a therapist because this wasn't normal. I thought he got it, and we part ways as friends. I think. He stopped coming to the place I worked. 
it was a relief. But I do get a message on my machine from him saying he's seeing a therapist, and maybe if he kept seeing her that we might see each other again. I ignore it. Then he started to show up at my house at night unannounced, offering me money or odd things like a can of paint. He knew I was painting the inside of my house and that I was struggling financially because I was working for a non-profit and taking care of my disabled brother. I never took the money or the darn paint, told him thank you, but no. I also told him he needed to stop coming over or the next time I would call the police. Then one evening, I hear something at my back door, slider. It's him, of course, and he wants to talk. I notice the door isn't locked. I quickly move to close the lock, but he shoves his way inside and refuses to leave, insisting we talk it out, following me around my house, talking incessantly in circles about our relationship and how it's affected him, how he's seeing that therapist, etc. Xiao, I call my best girlfriend down the street whose boyfriend lives with her. I take my brother, leave my house and go to her place. Dude shows up, of course, and my friend's boyfriend stands in front of me and my brother with his 45 on his side. And after about 15 minutes of nonsense, he leaves. Turns out he went back to my house. I get there. He's upstairs in my room. Going through my underwear drawer, I call the police. They get there and try to escort him out. He begins resisting. He punches a wall, knocks over some furniture, won't give up the panties, and says on his way out, he needs something to remember me by and hope you know what you've done. Some time goes by, and one day I get a call from a woman therapist who tells me she has been seeing this man because he was so distraught after our breakup. She said she was required by law to call me and tell me he told her he had a plan to kill himself, me and my disabled brother. She advised me to take out a restraining order, which I did, and that she gave him a choice to go voluntarily to a hospital or be taken in by police. He spent time in a hospital, and I lived in fear for months after his 30 days in the hospital were up, had to make repeated calls to get him served. Every night I put two Awo-4s down between the walls and the doors and on top of the windows fearing he would break in, I took a new job 45 miles away, put my house up for sale, brought my brother with me. After about a year, I felt like I was ready to perhaps start dating. I was pretty isolated in my new place, so I set up a profile online. Within a few weeks, I get a match there he is. It's my stalker. He made no further contact than a brief message mentioning, you probably don't date guys like me. But it completely made sense that he would do that. He always felt entitled to me just because of his feelings when there never was a relationship. Account 2. I work at a church. Obviously, I speak in public every Sunday. Random people always walk in to observe the service. One week, this young woman walks in, and she is clearly homeless. We deal with a lot of homeless who come through our church. We always try to treat them with respect. I don't want anyone to feel like they are less than because they can't afford a home. If possible, we connect them with services to get them into a better situation. Well, she keeps coming back week after week and I start getting strange emails that are pages and pages long. I worked at a psychiatric hospital as a chaplain and it looked like the rantings of somebody who was schizophrenic. It took me a while to realize that these were coming from her and they were talking about how we were going to move in together and have children. Eventually, things come to a head, and I have to tell her that she can no longer come to the church because the emails are becoming incessant. She disappears. And then one night when I'm working at the homeless shelter, I'm leaving at 3 a.m., and when I walk outside, she's sitting next to my car. She's irate and clearly wants to hurt me. I have to convince her to come inside the shelter. The people who are volunteering think she's just someone who wants to stay the night. No one seemed to be getting the clues that this woman is insane and is on the verge of attacking me. I eventually make my way out to my car and she runs out and blocks me from getting in. I'm able to go around the other side and jump in through my passenger door and make my way home. Thirty minutes later, she's pounding on my front door. She's clearly been watching my coming and going for some time and knew exactly where I lived. I called the police and they came and picked her up. Rather than arrest her, they took her to a fast food restaurant and dropped her off. To make a long story short, I end up getting a restraining order, which she violates. 
She's arrested and is taken to a psychiatric facility. She's in the facility for nearly six months until the judge tells her that she needs to leave the area and never return, otherwise she'll be permanently institutionalized. Thankfully, she got the hint and left. I used to fantasize when I was younger about a woman being obsessed with me and forming a relationship with her. I wish I could say that it was as romantic as I imagined. Instead, I was worried for the safety of my family and wasn't sure from week to week what would happen. When somebody is that mentally unstable, they could easily murder your whole family. I worked with patients who did that at the psychiatric hospital. The really fucked thing is that the leaders in my church didn't really seem to care. I tried to tell them the toll it was taking on me physically and mentally. They just kind of stared at me vacantly. Now, whenever anybody comes to me and tells me that they have a stalker, I give them my full attention and do everything I can to help them because I remember that feeling of being helpless. I don't ever want anybody to feel the way I felt. Count three. Long story short, started happening my sophomore year of high school by a kid a year older than me. Mostly able to brush stuff off as coincidence until college. My junior year of college, he started loitering around where the marching band practiced. That summer was hot F, so pretty much every guy was shirtless and most girls were just in a sports bra. I got a text from an old high school friend that apparently the creep took a pic of me and two of the other girls in my section and was passing it around. He was outside of my class buildings. Then one day, I was walking home from class with a friend, and as we got to my block, I saw him a few houses down. I told my friend I needed to go home with her and called the cops. The cops told me, don't go out after dark. It was 4 p.m. and sunny. Fucking useless. During this time, I was working one day a month at my job to stay on payroll until summer. He came in once a month, only ever during my shift. That summer, it escalated to be about once a week he was coming. My manager hid me every time, though. One evening, it was me and a co-worker I hated on second shift. Co-worker didn't believe me that Creep had been stalking me. Found out later it was him giving out my schedule. Creep came in. I didn't realize because I was busy with a task on the floor. He grabbed me. Thankfully, another customer was there. Heard the struggle and got me free. I reported it to the police the next day. The officer said that the case likely wouldn't go very far, but he'd tell Creep to knock it off. Well, about 10 minutes after I leave the police station, I got a call from my assistant manager asking what the fuck is happening because Creep showed up to my job with a baseball bat threatening to cave my head in. If there wasn't video, I'd prob not believe the cartoony nature. Cop called about 20 minutes later and told me that creep was being arrested and charged with a couple different things for things he said to the cop when they had a ought talk and the incident at my job. Creep took a deal. Judge reamed him out, accepted his guilty plea, but gave him the max sentence for what he pled to, seven years probation altogether. She also issued a stay away order because I didn't qualify for a restraining order. You have to have some kind of relationship to get one in PA. He was permabanned by the company I worked for. He showed up one night when my manager was covering a shift. She called the cops, turned out his buddy he brought with him had a warrant. He was arrested. Creep posted a video to Facebook with my address telling people to kill my cats and maybe me too. Same friend as before sent me a screen recording and says he reported the video, but wanted to warn me. A few other friends from high school saw it and reached out to make sure I was safe after reporting the video. The recording was turned over to police. He spent a few weeks in jail for violating probation. In law school, he started vandalizing the cat colonies I helped care for. Idiot never stopped to realize we had trail cams set up to monitor the cats and the feeding locations. He tried following me from the location once in his car, but thankfully I know alleys and vacant lots in that area from trapping and was able to weave to a police station. Cops in that jurisdiction were fucking useless again. So now I'm still looking over my shoulder, unsure of if he knows where I'm living now, when he's going to pop up again. Account 4. I was seeing this guy and my work shift changed, so I was getting off super late. One night I happened to notice he was there across the parking lot watching me. This happened several times and he denied it. I stopped seeing him immediately and ignored him for a year or so before he moved on to another girl. Account 5. 
He moved three houses down from my mom, who I see at least three times a week. We live in a big city with lots of different options. He wouldn't stop telling me how much he was in love with me, even though I was very clear that I was happy with my BF at the time. And even when my BF and I broke up, I still said there would never be anything between us, and I didn't feel the same for him. Naive of me was still nice to the guy. We worked together in a small company. But then he told me that I caused his depression and wouldn't stop following me at work events. Apparently, I caused his depression by seeing someone new. I blocked him for the final time off everything. He eventually left the company. This was about four years ago. A couple of weeks ago, he approached me on LinkedIn. I didn't block him on it, but I disconnected from him. Seems like he paid for a membership to message me as you can only message people you're connected with. Anyway, the whole message tone was that he missed me, but he spoke as if we were in an actual relationship. We were not, I didn't reply, and blocked him. Side note. A month before, that message, my current BF, got a notification that he was looking at my BF's profile. We didn't think anything of it, as we are in the same industry. Still gives me the creeps. Haven't heard from him since, but still get paranoid if I see a car like his driving around. Account 6. I had an ex-boyfriend stalk me. He was crazy possessive during the relationship. He told me who I was allowed to talk to, what I was allowed to wear, how my parents were secretly trying to turn me against him and control me, and would call me every night for an hour or more. He also demanded that I tell him where I was and who with if we weren't together. It was pretty intense. One night I went to a party with my friends, and this asshole was obsessively walking around the town it was in, trying to find the party. After I broke up with him, he started turning up everywhere I was. He slept in his car in the empty block by our house. He would sit at my work for ages while I was working. He sat outside the public pool while we had a school swimming thing on. I was in high school. One morning while I was walking to the school bus, he pulled over and tried to convince me to get in his car. He was unlicensed. BTW? It was even more scary because his father owned a remote property and a lot of weapons. Fuck that. That was the day I decided we should go to the police. I got an AVOA. That's an apprehended violence order to non-Australians. Call it a restraining order in America. And he wasn't allowed to contact me in any way. Be near my house or work, linger by my school, and otherwise had to stay away from me. He broke it at least once to leave a bunch of DVDs on the doorstep that I threw out. But then I didn't see him again for a couple of years. And only by chance, I was still scared to go out alone for a long, long time. Even now, 16 years later, I get quite anxious if I'm out and often need to call my husband to calm me down. Despite living on the other side of the country, apparently he's now married with a child, which is nice. His older sister watches my Instagram stories, though, which is weird, but kind of funny. Account 7. An ex, boyfriend of mine, took unsolicited photos of me while I was asleep at his house once. Obviously, this enraged me, and I had to tell him to delete those photos when I had found out months after the breakup. Instead, he kept them, and when I tried to block him, he created other accounts to send these photos to me. I threatened the police and moved to a different location a couple weeks after. The move was already planned. I'm unsure of how long it was since then but there were no more messages up until the one where he sent me my current address. He is now spending time in jail. Account 8. I have an abusive ex that stalks me in a way. Every few years, he will text me or unblock me on Facebook briefly and just remind me he's still keeping tabs on me. I imagine he pays one of those sites for my current number. I left him over 10 years ago. I've had several number changes since then. I've had exes that would repeatedly try and contact me through multiple means and keep at it for a while. My last one finally stopped about two and a half years ago. Most eventually give up, except for that one. But I've never dealt with stalking to a degree I felt I was in danger, more just messing with my heat and sense of security. Account 9. Met a guy on a night out, was just out of a really long-term relationship, and was looking for a hookup. We exchanged numbers, and I went out with him twice, being perfectly transparent that I was only looking for a hookup, which he claimed to be fine with. 
On our second meeting, he had bought me a gift and was way too into me and was catching feelings. So I kindly told him after that meeting that I didn't want to meet up again. He sent me messages begging to hook up again with, I think, I just ignored. He showed up at the bar we had met when I was there with friends and basically trailed me around all night, told my friend he had fallen in love with me, and she asked him to leave us alone at the end of the night. My friend and I were at a taco cart, and I guess he had grown angry of being avoided, so he just walked right up to me and clobbered me across the face, knocking me to the ground and ran off into the night. He claimed to have no recollection of doing it. I filed a police report, but they were very unsympathetic. I was an expat in a foreign country. They contacted him, and he texted in a panic that he would be in trouble. But nothing ever came of it because I very soon left the country. The weirdo still contacted me over the next weeks, months, to say how much he liked me and hoped we could get together again. If I had still been living in that city, I would have felt in very real danger of him showing up randomly and attacking me again. Account 10. Broke up with a girl that tried poking holes in my condoms to get pregnant when we were 17. She stalked me for five years afterwards, moving to the same area I was in all the time within a few months of me moving apartments while in college, and sometimes the same building. She terrorized me with the constant threat of causing a scene and making fake accusations in front of acquaintances to try to make sure I was always isolated. Eventually, I switched to a more prestigious university because I got a bunch of scholarships and she couldn't move near me because I chose to live in the dorms. So I got a small break from the insanity for six months, started an FWBIE, friends with benefits, relationship with two girl students in the same university from Brazil that were dorm mates at the time, and at the time we're talking about getting the apartment we would all eventually move to together while going to get lunch. This stalker girl comes out of nowhere around the corner all of a sudden and starts a huge scene full of crazy accusations and lies in the usual attempt she used to make to keep me isolated. Luckily for me, I had told them both about this craziness, and they immediately started getting in her face when she was doing it. The stalker girl tried to hit me when the two girls were making her out to be crazy. So she tried to attack me to make the whole situation worse, they beat the stalker girl's ass like it was nothing. Then after a few minutes of them grilling her about not stalking me anymore, we left back to their dorm room. Account 11. I'm not a victim of stalking, but I am a police officer who has investigated dozens. Usually the first thing that clues women in is when I tell them that they behaviors they're describing from their partner or ex-partner are stalking. Unwanted, obsessive, fixated, and repeated. All those things like turning up places unannounced, constantly needing to know where you are and who you're with, unwanted gifts and services that give him a sense of ownership and entitlement over you, infiltration of your support groups and isolating you from them, by working on them or on you, enlistment of third parties. The difference between domestic abuse and stalking is often academic. Stalking is not just being followed by someone you don't know, Account 12. Not me, but my aunt. She is still battling for custody over her kid, and the dad bragged about stalking them and sharing their location by using her phone. The thing is, he only had access to her phone before the kid was born and before they split up, which is the scary part. Account 13. It was a complicated, intense friendship to start. She has intimacy issues and triggered by whatever. So she filed a restraining order to keep me form the coffee shop we frequented. So before the hearing in front of the judge, I read her statement and thought, there are things here that she would only know if she stalked me. Part 4. Account 1. This started back in 2019. My life was a bit of an unstable mess at the time, for reasons I won't get into in case the person involved in this situation comes across this post. During this turbulent time, someone I didn't know contacted me on my personal Instagram. My account wasn't private, but it had under 100 followers and I don't use tags. So, unless you knew me personally, it would be hard to just stumble across. The person who contacted me had created a new account with no identifying information and was not following anyone else. They said they were wondering if they could help me. I asked what they wanted to help me with. 
They said, oh, nothing bad, just help you financially. They then offered me money for nothing via cardless cash or gift cards. They insisted we'd never have to meet and that they wouldn't get angry or force me if I said no. I refused up front, but they continued to message me and the language they used made me feel like they knew me personally and or knew my life situation was difficult. I tried to find out some identifying information to figure out who they were, asked if they knew me personally, and when they wouldn't answer my questions, I stopped responding. The following day, they sent me an essay apologizing, insisting they only wanted to help someone in need of assistance and said they wouldn't contact me again. They proceeded to message me the next day. And the next, and the next. I didn't block them, because at this point I was concerned for my safety and wanted to keep access to their messages. If I needed to contact police, I'd screenshot and sent the messages to friends. And my partner at the time was aware after several days of non-stop messages, I told them to stop harassing me and they deleted their account. A few weeks later, they messaged me again from a brand new account. The timing made me think for sure they knew me personally, as something major had happened in my life. Again, after some back and forth of telling them to stop harassing me again, they eventually stopped contacting me. Six months later, they were back with a new account. They didn't contact me but I noticed them watching my stories. Similar username to the last two accounts, so I just deactivated all social media accounts. When I reactivated my Instagram weeks later, I made it private, and within a couple of days, I had a follow request from a new account. I declined and reported their page as spam. That night, I received a message from an account with a similar handle as the one I'd reported, they identified themselves as the person who contacted me seven months ago. By that point, they'd created at least five new accounts to check up on me. There were limited people who were aware of my life situation when this all unfolded, and I had countless theories that made me distrust my closest friends. In the end, I narrowed down the possibilities to be an ex-colleague, though I don't know for sure. Account 2. I'd just moved out of my parents'. House. I was 18, living with a boyfriend. It was a really sketchy apartment complex in a really sketchy area. But it was cheap, and I wanted out of my family's house. There were two laundry units in the complex, but the one closest to our apartment had had the washers and dryers vandalized. So I would walk or drive our laundry to the other side of the complex. My first time doing laundry, there was a guy there waiting around for his laundry, being the sort of area it was. I'd already been advised not to leave laundry unattended or it might get stolen. So I waited there with my laundry, happy to have someone else to talk to. He seemed friendly, very chatty. Say it, he and his wife lived in an apartment really close to that laundry unit. I told him I lived on the other side with my boyfriend. We made conversation, and I felt happy that I'd possibly made a new friend. After a few times of doing my laundry, I realized that he would happen to show up shortly after I did to do his own laundry. At first, I figured it was just coincidence. He lives so close by, and everyone's got to do laundry. Then he told me on one of those laundry days, I saw you bring in your laundry, figured I'd just join you while you wait. He didn't have his own laundry to do. He just showed up because I was there. I thought that was odd but tried to think of it as him just enjoying being my friend. The next few times, he showed up again without laundry, just to talk to me. One day, he showed up again while I was there. It was just us, as it often seemed to be. He started making complaints about his wife. Everyone vents about partners sometimes. He'd done it before. But this time, his complaints all seemed to be sexual or affection-related. I tried to just give short answers, general replies, I didn't want to leave my laundry unattended. He started getting closer to me. Eventually, I was cornered. I nervously laughed, told him he needed to give me some space. Inwardly, I was panicking. He pushed me against a washing machine and began forcefully kissing me, groping me. I couldn't push him away. His breath smelled like burnt popcorn. And to this day, I can't stand the taste of any popcorn. Someone walked in, and I heard, Hey, What's going on? My attacker quickly backed off, said, Everything's fine. He looked at me and said, Talk to you later and left. 
I was too shocked and embarrassed to say anything to this random new person. I gathered my still damp clothes and left. After that, I started taking our laundry to a laundromat away from the complex. It was more work and more expensive, but I didn't want to see the guy. Again, out of embarrassment and shame, I didn't tell my boyfriend. I just said made some excuse about the apartment laundry machines being shit. I didn't see the laundry guy for a while. He didn't know which apartment I lived in, just that I was on the opposite side of the complex. One day, I was home alone, and I heard a knock on the door. I looked out the blinds, and it was him. He knocked again, waited a little longer, then left. Somehow he found out where I was, probably saw my car. After that, though, I never saw or heard from him again. I'd gotten a different vehicle not long after that, so maybe he figured I'd moved. Account 3. I found out she was truly stalking me when I went on a family vacation to a beach four hours from home. We looked down from the balcony and my name is written in the sand with a threatening, I know your room number. When we got home, I tried to press charges and the cop wouldn't take me seriously. He kept asking if I was a lesbian and had been in a relationship with her. He didn't believe me when I repeatedly said no, absolutely not, so he refused to press any charges. Account 4. She was screaming my name outside my apartment window at 1 a.m. She wrote letters to my bosses at work to try to get me fired. She called repeatedly until I stopped answering my phone, at which point she tried to fill my answering machine with Vivaldi. Not realizing it cut off after about one minute, she waited for me outside work because we had to talk. Still can't enjoy Vivaldi. Account 5. If cyberstalking counts, I've been steadily experiencing that off and on since 2017. My friend met some dude from Europe on Twitter. They dated and remained friends after they broke up. My friend fell into addiction issues, and this guy would message me out of concern for her. He and I eventually became friends online over it all. But things took a turn when he started saying inappropriate, flirty, sexual things to me. Even though I had a serious long-term boyfriend, who is now my fiancé, I would tell him to fuck off. But he'd find his way back into my DMs because he would have something to tell me about my friend. She was more honest with him about the things she was going through. Drug-related, than with me. Things kind of came to a head, though, when my friend and I fell out, due to her addiction, and he had pushed his creepy behavior to the max with me. At one point in one of his trips to America, presumably to visit her, she lived an hour south of me. He came to my city and had found my old Reddit account and messaged it saying he lusted for me and would be passing through my city to get to L.A. and wanted to meet up for coffee to talk. It was bullshit because you don't go through my city to get on the highway to L.A. from where he had visited my friend and flown in from. So that was super creepy. I deleted my Reddit account over that one. He tried to make alt Twitter accounts to message me, so I deleted my Twitter account, blocked him on Facebook and Instagram, didn't hear much from him after that. I eventually made a new Twitter account with a completely diff name, and the motherfucker still found it and made fake Twitter accounts and would tweet nasty. Naomi a como sawatekina ko tiaro. Sexual. Shit to me. I finally got my fiancé to message him and threaten him, and he backed off. Sadly, my friend lost her battle with to her addiction and passed away in 2019. He messaged me on Instagram. I told him I wasn't going to be his shoulder to cry on and to stop stalking me. Been pretty radio silent since, because he finally got a girlfriend. He tried to follow me from some photography Insta account he made, but I blocked it. My fiancé went to message him, but he had already blocked my fiancé from the photography account, which was kind of funny to me. Unfortunately, two weeks ago, he made another Twitter account and sent me this long message about how he wants to talk to apologize for his behavior and explain himself, blah, blah, blah. I've blocked it, but I'm at my wit's end. IDK what to do, and I feel like it's not fair that I have to keep deleting my socials to escape, and it's mentally draining and a little scary and violating. Account 6. This isn't me. But this is a woman I know who has been a close acquaintance of mine since 2009. From 2009, 2011, she worked at this local food parlor where she would outside and serve fast food to people who eat in their cars. It's a very unique place in my area. Anyway, dating back to Duxo 09, when she was a senior in high school. 
She noticed this man sitting in a blue Ford car. She told me he was about 21 years old. He wasn't quite at the parlor, but in a parking lot nearby. Then he drove off. The problem was she noticed this same man doing it periodically. Let's say once a week for about 30 minutes each time. And according to her co-workers, he would only do this when she worked that day. If she or anyone else she worked with tried to meet him in the car, he would quickly drive off. Then in 2012-ish, 2013-ish, until 2014-ish, somewhere in that range, she worked at a local Texas Roadhouse restaurant store. It wasn't too far from where she worked, as a waitress. To her shock, she, and once again, other co-workers, noticed that same blue Ford with the same man sitting in it. According to her, from what she could see through his windshield, he looked like a basic, clean-cut white man at about average size. This time she contacted the police, but they told her there was nothing they could do because he was technically just parked in a public parking lot. Once again, co-workers tried sneaking up on him, but he was always on guard and would drive away. Then, from around 2015-2018, she moved to a city about 40 minutes away and had a store managing position at a clothing store in the area. It was some local place. She saw him again in that same blue Ford about once a week, sometimes less frequent. She told me the creepiest part is, is she quit updating her Facebook profile and never put any details. Yet, he was still figuring out where she worked. Once again, he would only stay for a little bit at a time and drove away, and he always made sure he was in a public parking lot. Fast forward to present day. She now has her own career doing something I won't share on the internet, just in case her stalker sees it. I've asked her about it as recent as 2021 on Facebook, and she told me she hasn't seen him since she was working at the clothing store. She also told me she works in a very secluded area, and he would be easy to spot. She told me to this day she has no idea how he kept figuring out where she worked and no idea who he was. He consistently kept it up for almost a decade, and the worst part is, probably never did anything technically illegal, her story gives chills down my spine. Account 7. Don't know if this qualifies, but in high school there was this girl who always seemed to be nearby. During a marching band exhibition, I looked up in the bleachers and saw her maniac eyes tracking me across the football field. She was intense and creepy, sometimes downright scary. We've been married for 22 years. Account 8. When I was 14 and it was end of school year, me and my friends went to McDonald's. My friends finished theirs food, and I didn't because I'm a slow eater, so I stayed there sitting and eating my meal for extra 10 minutes. Then I saw a red car stopping next to me, and I saw that the driver took a picture of me, so I wrote down his license plate and car model. When I was walking to a bus stop, I saw the car passing by me, and the driver was looking at me. When I got home, I told my mom about this, and she decided that we're going to go to police station and report this. Investors were asking me a lot of questions about that day, like what happened, what did the driver look like, etc. They then called us in the next day with camera footages showing the car literally stalking me. They then ran the plate and arrested the man that took the picture of me. Turns out he was working in a group of people that were kidnapping kids. Luckily, they only managed to kidnap three kids that were later found in a stable condition. All of this wasn't in media, so when I tell my friends about this, they think I'm lying, but I'm not. Account 9. My ex, i.e. my baby's daddy. I left because I was physically and emotionally abused. He knows where I work and all. One time... I got off work and went to a store. Then when I was driving and making a turn, his car was next to me. I thought he just wanted to talk, so I went to an empty parking lot. He wanted me to go out the car, but I said we can talk even if I'm in the car, because I'm scared he gonna hurt me. Then yes, shit happened. He put his hands inside the halter open window, unlocked the door, and pulled me out of the car, forcefully pulling my hair. I'm lazy to type, maybe Emma tell the rest of the story after. Still makes me nervous when I think of everything after three years. Account 10. It's the usual story of a guy who started out nice and funny, but later showed red flag of being unhealthy attached to me from a young age. We used to be childhood friends, but we grew apart. I had no clue he was obsessed with me. We chatted for a while, and once I realized the red flags, I flat out rejected him, but he insisted, 
so I blocked him. He made 50 Facebook accounts and lived in my filtered massages for months. I still blocked every account just to show him I'm not playing or even entertaining the idea. He started following me on the streets trying to talk. I got really scared and nervous and altered my usual routes until I was fed up and called my brother-in-law to ask for help, and he kind of threatened my stalker's mother that he'll make life hell for them in our neighborhood. The guy stopped harassing me, and shortly after they moved away. Account 11. So, I lived in a small Midwestern town at this time, with my grandparents. When it began, I was 21. My sister, who lived with us, was 20, and my then, GF, was 22 and spent a lot of time at the house with us. It began when my GF and I had gone for a drive, and she pulled up on the curb to drop me off before driving home. There were three or four trees on one side of the house, and I saw the silhouette of a man standing in the tree line, stocky, tall, and wearing a ball cap. I sat in the car, tinted windows, so he couldn't see us for a while before deciding to just sprint to the front door and tell my grandparents someone was creeping in the yard. My grandpa told me that one of my friends had just left the house, drunk, and maybe stopped in the tree, lined to pee he could get home through or backyard. I didn't think it looked like him. But I had a history of being a little paranoid, so I let it go. The next time he was seen, about a week later, I think, I was up late alone, on my computer in the living room. My favorite recliner sat in front of but facing away from, a big picture window with sheer curtains that sat directly over the long driveway. I got out of my chair to get something to drink and saw something out the window from the corner of my eye. When I turned to look, I saw a stocky, tall man wearing a ball cap running down the driveway to the street. I went and woke up my grandpa, but he thought it might have been one of his renters. The man his question was socially inappropriate and had a history of doing weird stuff, a few months previously, he had come to our house and taken my grandpa's truck. He always left the keys in the vehicles because grandpa had lent it to him once, so he thought it was okay. I didn't think it looked like him either, but again, history of paranoia. So next time he was at the house was just two days later. Again, up late on my computer in my favorite recliner, the living room shared a wall with the attached garage. I heard some noises in the garage but thought a raccoon or a squirrel had gotten in. Then, I heard a human cough. I audibly gasped and ran to wake Grandpa. He got his gun, ran to the garage, and saw nothing. This time, he scolded me. I had a habit of reading, watching scary things while staying up late. He thought I had worked myself up. He did lock the doors from the garage to outside, though I talked to my sister. Her bedroom was in the basement, and she said her dog had been acting strangely. He was a very well-behaved boy, friendly towards everyone and pretty much everything. But she was hearing weird noises here and there outside her window, and when she did, her dog was growling. She thought it was strange, but thought that maybe he was just overprotective at night. She didn't see anything, after all. When I told her what I'd experienced, she agreed to keep a closer eye on things. The next time, my GF was staying the night at my house. About a week and a half later, I told her about what had happened, but she thought my sister and I were being dramatic. Bad things don't happen here, was the general consensus. Whenever she stayed, she liked to open the bedroom window over the backyard, to let the breeze in as she slept, I begged her not to this night, and after some back and forth, she agreed. When I fell asleep, though, she opened it anyway. She woke up in the middle of the night and couldn't figure out why. She rolled over in bed and found herself face to face with a stocky, tall man wearing a ball cap, stood right outside my bedroom window, and staring in, she yelled out, jumped up and shut the window, and I ran to wake Grandpa again. My sister was still awake heard my GF and came upstairs to see what was going on. She said her dog had been growling again. Grandpa took his gun and went outside. He found muddy footprints outside of both mine and my sister's bedroom windows. But my grandma talked him out of calling the cops, stating he was a peeping Tom and that it was harmless. We should just make sure we weren't undressed in front of unobscured windows. My grandpa did, though, essentially set a curfew for my sister, my GF, and I. He agreed to wait up each night until everyone who would be there was home. We didn't see or hear from him for some time after that. 
We thought we were safe. We weren't. About two weeks after the window incident, my sister and I were up late studying. We decided we were hungry, and there was no junk food in the house, so we were going to drive to the local McDonald's. We took her dog with us, because she often bought him his own chicken nuggets, and he loved car rides. We got home, pulled into the driveway, and finished the song we were listening to. Then, we decided to go inside. As we were walking up the long driveway, Diesel leading the way, then my sister, then me, I heard behind me what sounded like footsteps stepping on crunchy leaves. Before I could turn around, Diesel started snarling and growling and jumped behind me. My sister yelled, run, and we did. I could hear Diesel snarling behind me and the sound of the footsteps picking up. We got onto the steps and my sister yelled for the dog, getting him inside and locking the door. But not before my sister saw a tall, stocky man wearing a ball cap trying to kick Diesel. We sat at the kitchen table, crying, trying to catch our breath. Diesel was not catching his, though. He kept running into the living room, growling and running back to the kitchen to check on us. My sister woke Grandpa, and he called the cops. The man was gone by then, but the cops agreed to patrol the area. Thank God that was the end. We never saw or heard from him again, but it still freaks me out to be out and about after dark at my grandparents. Part 5. Account 1. So I was in like ninth or 10th grade, and I went to this small little punk show at a coffee shop a few towns over from where I lived. I can't remember who approached who first, but this girl and I started talking. She seemed cool. And at the end of the show, we exchanged numbers and then parted ways. This was before cell phones were popular and texting didn't exist. So it started off with her calling me every day on the house phone. Sometimes I'd be busy. I also played soccer year-round and played and trained like six coins seven days a week, and she'd get angry I'd be too busy to talk to her. Eventually, this got annoying, and since we had caller ID, I just started ignoring her calls. Then she started in with calling from blocked or different numbers. By then, I told her I wasn't interested and told her to kick rocks. She cried and told me she loved me, despite us only meeting once and talking on the phone a few times for probably less than an hour each time. Eventually, I told my parents to only answer calls from numbers they recognized, but this girl kept calling so much my parents changed our number. At that point, I thought I was finally done. W her. So flash forward a few weeks, and I'm taking a train into the city, and guess what? She just so happens to pop up on my train car. I was pissed and moved cars, and she just kept following me and crying it was so weird... She followed me off the train and said all she wanted to do was hang out with me. I told her to shove off, and if she didn't, I told her my parents and I had talked about getting the police involved. This really seemed to piss her off, but she finally walked off. Flash forward to summer and my summer job all through high school. I was a lifeguard. One day I walk into work and we have a new hire, any, you guessed it. It was this girl. I finally went to the police, but there wasn't much they could do. Back then... I didn't have call logs or texts to prove I was being stalked. I spoke to my employer and told them about the issue, and they said they essentially couldn't fire her, but would put us on different shifts. After a while, she must have caught on to this. She started spending all of her time at the pool on and off the clock. Again, there was little my job could do. So she would creepily stare at me and try to talk to me while I was doing my job. I was miserable and this girl was chasing away girls I was friends with and telling people at work we were in a relationship. It was so terrible. Eventually, I confronted her and said some really mean things, but I was tired of her. Eventually, she learned from someone at work where I lived. She would sit outside on the sidewalk and just wait for me to come out to go to school or practice or work and just act insane. She would cry and scream and ask why I just wouldn't love her back, etc., as she sat outside my house like clockwork. Since we were minors, my parents decided to call the police on her because she was clearly not going to school. The police approached her a few times, but she would still sit outside. But now she was hiding in bushes or trees. 
At one point, I got really depressed and was worried I'd never be able to get this girl to leave me alone, and my parents started having real conversations about moving to get away from her, as the police still were unwilling to help. I was so entrenched at school with my friends and sports and was so devastated. Eventually, my grandmother loaned us money to hire a private investigator to follow her around and create an opportunity to watch her and prove the pattern of stalking, pictures upon pictures of her sitting outside our house at all hours. One day I planned to go visit a friend and didn't see her outside and thought maybe I had gotten lucky that day and she just wasn't around. So I step out of my front door and start walking in the direction of my friend's house. Out of nowhere, she steps out from behind a car and everything was a blur from there. She attacked me. She was trying to punch me and scratch me. And while I don't remember a whole lot about her attacking me, I got lucky and someone called the police after seeing us fighting. The police showed up, and of course I was taken into custody despite my injuries. I was taken to the station and was able to get the arresting officers to let me speak to the detective who had been working with me, but never was willing to charge this girl. My parents showed up with the investigator we had hired and all the evidence was shown to the police. They finally, after almost a year, finally found the girl and charged her with stalking. I had to go to court and I finally saw the parents of this girl. By this time I was a junior in high school and she had been disrupting my life for almost a year and a half. Eventually she accepted a plea which required her to receive mental health help and was put on probation. She was no longer allowed to intrude on my life and my nightmare was finally over. I went off to college and would have terrible nightmares that she had found me there too. After a few years, I stopped looking over my shoulder and was able to move on, but it was a deeply disturbing time for me. People often think stalking is something that only happens in adulthood, but it is rampant during teen years, and often the justice system overlooks this behavior as just kids acting out. Stalking laws have gotten so much better, and with technology the way it is today, it's so much easier to prove. I hope no one has to deal with a situation like this. Account 2. Not me, but my sister had one in high school. She would get random texts saying how good she looked that day and other creepy things. When she finally told me, my cousin and a few friends followed her around to see if one of us would spot the guy. My friend saw one guy a few times. We followed him to his car, called the number, and he picked up. They had to physically hold me down after I beat the shit out of him, told him if he tried contacting her in any way, I would cut off his balls. She was never bothered again. Account 3. A year ago, I was riding my bike out to my local Burger King for some lunch. For some context, this place has a main lot, but the lot has a smaller outlet behind the building that connects to a larger shopping complex. And I am male, 19 at the time, so I'm riding on a busy main street, and I come up to one of the several entrances to the shopping complex. This dark-colored Cadillac XTS with this white male who appeared to be in his late 30s or early 40s behind the wheel, was blocking the sidewalk I'm riding on. No bike lane as I'm riding towards it. The dude backs up and I give him a thank you, wave, and smile. I think a minute later, I approach a red light. I see his Cadillac on the right lane closest to me, and him looking back at me. His body turned around a bit in his seat, looking straight at me, traffic goes and I see him turn off into another entrance to this shopping complex, I make it to the Burger King. And who do I see? Cadillac driver. He had driven through the complex to the back of Burger King, through that little outlet. So as I'm coming in, we're basically moving towards each other, and I can see he is looking at me, not really breaking contact. As he turned his car around to the front of the building, he is still looking at me. He creeps to the front of the building and sits there. I ride up onto the sidewalk and chain my bike up. I walk off and I stop, taking a good look at his car and his plate. I pull my phone out to jot the bit of information down, and he drives off, so nothing of the traumatic sort happened, but it was a very strange encounter. Account 4. So back when I live in Mexico, me and my friend, his name in this story is Jose. So me and Jose would play till dark in Mexico, every time me, him played outside. We see some bushes moving and strange movements around my house. This mysterious thing would follow us to stores and would follow us in the dark and shit. 
Every time we hang out, it got louder, and more obvious someone was there, but Jose and I thought it was just a dog. So we didn't really care, until Jose and my dad and I walked to the bush too, see a guy in black, and I can't really remember much, but he was in all black, in there with a camera. Then my dad beat him up to a near-death situation, and that's basically what happened when I was in Mexico. Account 5 I had this guy friend who would always tell me that he liked me during high school, but I was not interested in him. On the end of the year of my freshman year, he cornered me near at the library and confessed his feelings that he loved me, but I still was not interested in him. Within the rest of my years in high school, I kept my distance from him but he seemed really normal after that having a girlfriend. Then a few years ago, I just broken up with my ex-boyfriend, we had a mutual friend, that told him about the breakup between me and my ex. He would message me in the middle of the night on Messenger, and I would just see and go back to sleep. Every time I checked on the message, he would respond without me messaging him. I had to message him back that said I had trauma with his advances in high school, and I really felt uncomfortable with him messaging in the middle of the night without me responding. If he really did respect me, I would block him, and he would never contact with me again. I never heard from him since, and hope that he never contacts me again. Account 6. He was schizophrenic and smelled bad, so nobody would partner with him in my physics class. I did cause I wanted to be nice. He was actually really smart and nice to talk to about the class, until he started following me, from school to my house, and trying to hold my hand in class and being suspiciously near my friends and I all the time. He also did the same thing, but escalated into something worse. To a girl my ex was friends with, told the school they did nothing about it because he hadn't actually done anything. Now we're both in college and departed. Thank God he goes to Yale majoring in physics and heard I was majoring in it too, so he wanted to see if I'd want to keep in touch told him to have a good summer and blocked him. Account 7. In my early 20s, I had the blessing of having not one, but two stalkers. Simultaneously, can't make this shit up. One was a nightmare, and one was a patient I took care of at the hospital. I'll tell the story of the creep, as this one was more disturbing. Long post, but it's for my friends that enjoy a creepy experience. I broke up with the SO. And the next morning, I had an unsigned letter on my car saying if I needed anyone to talk to, they were around. I was creeped out, but young and naive, so I threw the letter away and ignored it. Shortly after, I realized one day that the key to home that my SO gave back to me was missing. Again, I brushed it off because I always lose shit. ADD life, y'all. It started small, but I started to have bizarre events at my house. One day, I came home. And my blinds upstairs were closed that I never closed and the lights were on. I called the cops and was told I must have forgotten them. Fine. Then I came home and my jewelry boxes were moved onto a desk chair. Granted, all my shit is costume jewelry, but again called the cops. Was told it was probably my ex doing it. So it's fine, not fine. But I'm clearly being ignored here. One of the other disturbing events that occurred was that I noted that my spare car key was missing. I reported that as well, and was told by the cops I misplaced it. I drove out to the city one night for dinner and beers. About 25 men from where I lived, I never leave windows open in the city, because I'm not an idiot. When I went back to my car that evening, all of my windows and sunroof were open, with my spare key sitting on the front seat. Finally, I'm moving out of this damn place, I came home late from work and wanted to pack a few boxes before I went to bed. I go to the basement and notice immediately that it feels colder than usual. I look around the corner and the window is smashed with boxes propped up underneath so someone could let themselves in. Out, I freak the F out. I run upstairs to grab my phone to call 911 and see that my missing house key is sitting on my kitchen table. Took the cops a cool 45 men to finally get to my damn house. I move to the city and all the creep shit stops. A few months later, I received a phone call from a police officer I knew from my old town. Now, get this. The police arrested a man in my new city for trying to break into an ATM machine. When he gets to the station, he starts ranting that he need to pay for his sex addiction and how he's been stalking not just me, but another girls in the neighborhood. 
So in addition to me, he was also doing the same shit to a young mother a few doors down. The cops say they have a bag of my belongings and ask if I want it back. It's a bunch of my undies and costume jewelry that my grandma gave me as a child. I then learned that I had actually worked with this asshat at a local grocery store a few years back when I was in college. Didn't recognize him, but realized he was the creepy produce guy that all the girls stayed away from. The perv went to jail because his dumb ass stole pictures from the neighbor's computer. Since he took pictures that she had of her kids in a bathtub, they classified it as pornography and he got bigger charges against him. The police apologized to me for not believing my story. But it pisses me off that I was ignored simply for being a young female. Morale to the story. Always go with your gut feel about the creepy produce guy. Account 8. He was my delivery driver. Got my details from my parcels he was delivering to my home, found me on FB, and kept messaging me after repeated attempts of saying I'm not interested, I'm engaged. He made alter accounts after I blocked him. My fiancé contacted his sister and told him to cut it out before he involves himself more. She basically said, ah, shit, this isn't the first time. If he contacts her again, call the police. We need all the girls to report him to be able to stop him. Apparently, he's tore his family apart with his behavior and has had many angry men banging on their door. Account 9. I had a friend in high school who ended up going to the same town for college that I did. We were friends in college, too. When I started to date my girlfriend, all three of us became friends. And that's where things got a little weird. At Christmas time, the three of us exchanged gifts. We got him something small. He got me something small, but he got my wife airline tickets to go visit her sister. After school, I moved back to the town that I came from, along with my girlfriend. He stayed in the college town, which was about three hours away. At this point, we knew the guy was weird. He sent my wife a couple of weird poems, with weird rantings on the backs of the poems. Then we started to get weird phone calls in middle of the night. He called my mom, my wife's parents, and friends of ours telling people that I had AIDS, I don't, and that I was gay, I'm not. Then he started driving down three hours from the college town to my town and parking across the street from my house. I called the cops multiple times. They told me there was nothing they can do unless he threatened to kill me. I called his dad. I found out that he was bipolar and his dad thought that he was just having an episode because he stopped taking his meds but that he was harmless. We were scared shitless. The last time I saw him, I left my house to go get a pizza, and he was parked out front. At this point, I kept a baseball bat by my front door. I grabbed the bat and yelled, I'm going to fucking kill you. He started his truck and took off. I jumped in my car and chased him. While I was chasing him, I called 911. They told me to stop, dispatched cops to my house who were waiting for me when I got back. This wasn't the first time I had called, so they were familiar with what was going on. They were sympathetic because this wasn't the first time I called, but FYI cops frown on you chasing people with a baseball bat. Next time I heard about him, he had been arrested for going into a Walmart and throwing fake blood all over everything. He was arrested and taken to jail when he threatened to kill himself, so they transferred him to a mental facility. Then I started getting calls over and over from the mental facility. I called back and said one of your patients is calling me, and they told me that they couldn't confirm if he was even there. Eventually, the call stopped. Life went on. And year or two later, my girlfriend and I got engaged. We did all the wedding stuff, signed up for registries, etc. Odd, apparently he saw this information online because we started getting calls and stuff in the mail from him again. A year or so after we got married, I got a call from a friend telling me that he had died. I could not have been happier. Fuck that guy. Account 10. There was a girl at school in 8th or 9th grade. She was always known as the Weeaboo Kid. Always talked about anime and acted out as anime characters from time to time. Most people stayed away from her but were fine with her. Was just known as the weird kid from school. One day, out of nowhere, she approaches me at my locker and confesses her true feelings that were forcibly locked away for so long. Her words, not mine. Keep in mind that we have no classes together and only heard about her from other classmates. Obviously, I politely rejected her. She then had a sad, devastating look on her face, then sucked that up and stuck her hands in her pants and started to moan loudly. Everyone, of course, stares at me and the weeaboo kid. 
Until one of the school faculty saw and dragged her away from me, I thought that was the end of it, and continued my day as normal. Boy, was I wrong. Back then, I walked to school. Now, ever since that incident happened, I have caught her multiple times following me at a distance. When I confronted her about it, she told me how her mom couldn't afford gas in her car. Her mother's car was an electric car. So, now I knew she became an obsessive stalker. That's when things took a turn. I had her slip in pieces of paper of fan art, of me and her in my locker, had her sit with me during lunch, and tried to propose to me mutable times. Now, before the fan art phase of it. Not gonna lie, I kind of liked it. But that was taken too far. I decided to confront the girl with her group of weeaboo friends and told her to stop and leave me alone. She, of course, bawled her eye holes out. I've then caught her following me home and peeking through windows, but then one day, she was never seen again. Morale, don't try to shoot the sheriff. Account 11. A man used to come into my work and talk with me every day. He started only going through my till, running into me on my lunch breaks and offering to take me somewhere. Eventually, on my walks to school, his red truck started following me. I would see it everywhere. I told my friend's dad and he started driving me. One day he was dropping me off, but the red truck stopped right behind our car and he told me to stay in the car. After that he disappeared and I found out he's in prison for attempted murder or his wife. Account 12. My parents stalk us because I cut them out. They are mentally ill, unstable and abusive. They send messages, send the police for fake wellness checks, threaten to sue for grandparents' rights, then love bomb us with gifts in the driveway. I have filed it, so if they come on my property, it is trespassing. But the police and law won't do anything else. It doesn't matter that my dad almost killed me at least twice. I can't get a restraining order. They have called to my kids from the sidewalk. But luckily, my husband was right there. My husband scared the neighbor yesterday because he didn't recognize her and saw her staring at our kids, and he went over and asked if he could help her. It's hell. My dad will try to murder me someday. I am the evil bitch who stole their grandkids. No, I don't own a gun. I have PTSD, depression, anxiety, ADHD, and bipolar too. While I can't imagine doing anything to myself or others, I don't want guns in my house. If I hesitate, it is just putting a gun in the hands of my stalker. I do have an alarm and cameras. The police in my town is a joke. They are cracking down on distracted drivers and the homeless. But helping me is out of question. Part 6. Account 1. Yep. Twice met a guy online. He seemed pretty nice but was older. Then me, well, I didn't exactly get how old he was because he turns up in my town from two states away and is in a military uniform. I'm 14. He attempted to come to my house, but my dad told him he was going to call the cops on him. Next guy was when I was in my early 20s. I was out with friends, fairly drunk, and stupidly agreed to give the bartender my number. He texted me the next day and invited me to the bar to sit while he was working. I was bored, so I agreed. I get there, and he's not really someone I'd normally date, but he seemed nice enough, so I gave him a shot. We went on a few dates and had sex once. It was horrible, so I told him I wasn't really interested anymore. He started showing up to my work and wanting me to drop everything to hang out with him. He told me he told all his work colleagues that he had a new girlfriend and he wanted me to meet them. Also figured out he had a young daughter and wanted me to meet her too. I hasn't known him long at all. Last straw was when he showed up to my house. I didn't answer the door, so he started walking around, peeking in windows and attempting to open both the front and back doors that thankfully were locked. I told him never to show up at my work or home again. His reply was, baby, I love you. Ugh. Count two. I was 16 years old, and in my senior year of high school, I had known a guy who was 21 years old at the time that I had met through mutual friends when I was 14 and he was around 18 or 19. We weren't close, but he would sometimes show up when all of us were hanging out. The moment I turned 16, he started showing an interest in me and talking to me on Facebook more and wanting to hang out one-on-one. -on -one. Where I live, 16 years old, is the age of consent and even get married. I wasn't very comfortable with it, and I let him know. 
At that point, he started getting very pushy and aggressive, saying things like, you're not that pretty anyways, and you'll never find anyone as good as me. He also would threaten to hurt me. At that point, I told him that I was done with his shit, and if he came near me that I would call the police, I ended up blocking him on all social media. He then started to come to my house and leave little gifts behind. The first one was a fake rose that was stabbed into our front lawn. He would also leave bags of candy on the porch. After this, things started to escalate drastically, and my parents were 100. Aware of this, the day before Halloween at 7 a.m., he showed up at my house and knocked on the door. My mother answered the door to be greeted by him. He gave her a gift basket and told her to give it to me. I became very fearful and had a strong feeling that he was going to hang around that morning in anticipation that I would walk to school. For context, I walked to school alone every day because my parents forced me to and no other kids from my school lived in the same neighborhood. I asked my mother if she would drive me because I was afraid he would be outside, but she refused and told me I was being paranoid. Lo and behold, I hadn't walked more than 10 feet away from my house, and there he was crossing the street towards me. I immediately turned around and booked it back home on the verge of tears because of how scared I was. He was screaming for me, saying, I just want to talk. I got back inside and told my mother. I pleaded to her to call the police, but she refused. Her response broke me and made me feel helpless and unsafe. She said, and what are they going to do about it? There's nothing I can do and they won't do anything. Just go to school and deal with it. She offered to drive me halfway to school because she didn't want to make the full five-minute drive. She drove me two blocks down and dropped me off at a park that was somewhat close to my school. I crossed through this park every day to get to school. I was still very fearful that he would be there because he knew my Rudy that I walked. She told me to walk fast if I was so scared, started to jog across the park, and I looked behind me to see him just standing there and staring at me. I started sprinting as fast as I could, but I was lucky he didn't follow me. When I got to school, I told everyone that I could. My friends, some of my teachers, and my counselor, but nobody seemed to care. Only one of friends was kind enough to give me ride when he could, but our friendship didn't last long because he saw my dire situation as a way to hook up with me. After that day, my mental health plummeted, and I developed severe paranoia. I didn't want to go outside anymore, and I struggled to walk to school every day. He would often carve our initials around the park so I would see, and he would wait outside my school across the street in a public area after I got out, I ended up taking different routes that would make my walk go from 30 minutes to one hour and a half because I was scared for my life. This went on for almost the entire school year until I was able to get my first car, which I am so grateful for. No thanks to anyone as nobody helped me. All of my support systems failed me and no one seemed to care. I didn't have a phone to call the police when he was actively stalking me, and at the time I wasn't educated enough to know that I could call a non-emergency line to start a case. I was basically told that there was nothing anyone could do, and I needed to just deal with it and hope I don't get murdered or raped. It's been ten years, and I am still full of resentment and hatred. Nobody did anything to help me. I suffer from a lot of PTSD and paranoia now because of it. Account 3 he was a patient at a clinic I work at. He came back after a week without an appointment, but I wasn't able to accommodate him due to my schedule being full. Secretary asked him to set an appointment another day, came back a few minutes with a Sunday for me that was on my lunch break. My rad tech told me to throw it as she was creeped out because he was still lingering outside the clinic. Even asked my male co-worker if I was married, but co-worker didn't give any info about me. He stayed for hours until we had to call security to escort him out of the building. Had to have my brother pick me up to make sure he won't follow me home. It went on for months. He would just pop out and hang outside the clinic. There was an instance where he brought me food, but I would reject it. He even made a reservation at a restaurant at Valentine's Day. Good thing we had a policy at the clinic to not give our personal numbers. He would just text the clinic asking about me. I replied through text pretending to be the secretary, and told him that he was disturbing the clinic and would be pressing charges against him if this continues. He did stop after that. It made me really paranoid for that duration. I had to be more hyper-aware of my surroundings, and I had to get a pepper spray. What was worse, 
is when I sought help from my male co-workers and managers, bosses. One of my male co-workers was even telling me to milk it and have him deliver us food. My bosses didn't even care. One of my senior female co-workers tried to talk to him, but it didn't work. A friend of mine even constantly joked about it. It really felt like I was on my own. Whenever it would come up, I will be constantly reminded of how awful it felt being stalked. Account 4. I once had dinner with a woman that mentioned near the end of our meal to not get worried, but her stalker was in the restaurant doing what stalkers do best. I never went out with her again. I felt that she was almost proud of it. Account 5. Mine was an ex-boyfriend. We dated young, I was 13, and he was 15. Dated for a few years, three, four. Anytime I'd make new friends or do anything without him, he got controlling. So we broke up. He started dating a new girl, and apparently they'd be at his place. And if he saw my car, model and color, he'd chase it down the street. It wasn't my car since I had a fairly popular one. One time he did find my car, though. He had this poor girl in the car with him and followed me a good ten miles back to the apartment I was living at with my mom that had a gate and followed me through, parked his car blocking mine in. And that's when I noticed him. He got out crying and trying to get close to me, so I ran inside and locked the doors. My mom was out of town. He left shortly after, middle of the night. I heard something outside my window and called my family friend. I was probably 17, so didn't think to call the cops, who showed up and found this guy outside my window. He quietly approached him and held a gun to his head and questioned him. Apparently, he had a backpack with rope, a knife, and some vials of God knows what. Don't ask me why the cops weren't called. Years later, he went to jail for mass manufacturing and distribution of narcotics and somehow skipped town. And I'm pretty sure fell off the face of the earth. I was the first call he made from jail, but the collect call wouldn't go through. I called his brother and they dealt with it, but I will always fear him showing up randomly. Account 6. Had an ex that cheated. We broke up. He had gone to a hockey game one night and sent me and another friend videos from the game. I didn't interact or reply to any texts in the group. I was able to read their messages, though and saw a text he sent that said a street was wet from having the fire hydrants drained. The next morning, my dad had mentioned how they had drained the fire hydrants on our street. I texted my ex and asked what street he had been on that had drained the fire hydrants. His reply was, yours, silly. My street was not on his way home from the game. My town wasn't even on his way home from the city he had been in. I asked why he had driven down my street and he said to be closer to me. That was the only time I knew that he did that. Still terrified me that he did it. Made me wonder if it happened other times. Account 7. My ex-boyfriend. We dated for two years in high school. He confessed he was into dead bodies. Abused me and cheated a lot. So one day I just ghosted him. I was already in legal trouble over him and I just had enough. Later I got into a new relationship with my current S.O., one night, a bit before my court case, I get a text from him and several calls. I block him and show my lawyer thought that a lawyer mentioning your calls in court that your crazy-ass grandma attended would be a big enough leave me alone, but evidently not. Fast forward, I'm selling an old chest binder. He finds me somehow and starts harassing me through comments on my listings on the selling app I'm using. Later, I'm looking at an old social media of mine for some pics of a friend and I, and realized had made several accounts to continue messaging me, including mentioning my BF. He also got my number somehow a few months back. I think he's married now. I used to keep an eye on his crazy ass to make sure he wasn't too close to where I live now, but I haven't checked since his last stunt. This is the tip of the crazy iceberg for him and his family. But anyway, if you're dating a guy who lies about having an Irish accent and his dad being in a cult, please get your man. I've already had to call the police once over this. It's been three years, and he was messaging me, begging me back while y'all were together. Account 8. Woman down the street? I think she is mentally deranged, but she's fully functioning with a job and everything. It got to the point that she would drive by our house and look in our window and honk her horn. And then one day she stops and says, 
I haven't seen so-and-so eating breakfast in the morning for a while. Are they okay? Full-on sketchy as fuck. I told one of the most gossipy neighbors in the area what she was doing. And it slowed down to the point I don't notice her anymore, but she still makes me worried, and she's not the only one. Account 9. I may have written too much. While it wasn't a physical stalker, they were still a stalker nonetheless. So, a lot of this requires context, and it was also partially my fault. To start, I was in a friend group with about six or so people. We usually hung out on Xbox and played games together. One of the friends was a girl, and she was already dating one of our friends. One night, she asked me if I wanted to play a game with her since I was the only one on, and so I agreed. After a match or two, I could tell that she was starting to hit on me, and after a while, I started to hit on her back. Now, I knew this was wrong. She was still dating someone, let alone a friend of mine. But we went further anyways, and one day it kind of hit me that what I was doing was really not okay. So I told him about what me and her had been doing. Now, I should point out that while he was my friend, he was mostly my friend's friend and didn't like me as much. So when I told him about this, he didn't quite believe me, thinking I was trying to break them up for my own gain. So, the next time she would do something sexual while we were a call, I took a screenshot and sent it to him. He confronted her about it and spoon-fed him lies, telling him that I harassed her into undressing, and at one point said I hacked her camera. He was understandably furious at me, while none of it was true. He didn't know that. So I understand why he was mad. She also threatened to call the cops on me for things I didn't ever do. This did not sit well with me. My closest friends in the group knew me better than they did and knew I would never do anything like. And while others had their doubts about what she was saying, still didn't want me around anymore. She would later confess to them that she was lying to them and kept on trying to get me to talk to her, but I always ignored her. She realized that it wasn't going to work and made alt accounts to try and contact me on them. Once I realized it was her, I promptly blocked them. She would then go and get random dudes on the internet to threaten me and try to get me to unblock her. She still does it to this day and I have no thoughts of talking to her. This was way longer than it needed to be, wasn't it? Sorry, this is my first time doing this so I wasn't sure how much detail to include. TLDRX tried to get me to come back to her with several alt accounts and friends accounts and tried to get me put in jail and still does it. Account 10. I had a stalker in virtual reality on Flickr for quite some time. They went as far as adding my friends on Skype using my screen name and posed as me in a serious manner. I confronted them and aggressively stalked them back even after they blocked me. Ultimately, we both agreed to block each other, but throughout the years... I've always been able to tell when she resurfaces and tries to befriend me. There are little things that give it away, and she's never very smart about approaching me. She loved my artwork, and it was flattering on some level, but still hurt when she pretended to be me and used my net handle in the community I was a part of. Account 11. Once meet a hot girl on a dating app. We chatted and talked about anything, nothing serious going on. She sent me a selfie, I sent a selfie. Normal stuff. She asked me for my FB, I agreed, then shit start to hit the fan. She edited a picture of her and someone else, like a cousin, I suppose, in which they were side by side. She erased the head of the other and shopped my head. She put on her status that she was in a relationship with me and that we were engaged, and she uploaded pics with phrases like, we're in love forever and ever, found the one, and all the bitches better back off, and so... But she had set up that stuff as private, so I had no idea of that. I was not aware of all this, by the way, and I got wind of it later. Bear with me. She started to hint that we should be together on the chat. I started to see red flags, so I carefully avoided those topics, because I had the feeling that she was a cool girl and did not want to ruin the friendship that we had up to that point on time. Then suddenly... One of my female classmates wrote me, say, buddy, who's this chick that sent me this messages? And then she showed me a couple of screenshots of messages where she was threatening to find and kill my classmate because we were far too close in the pic. It was my end of year classroom pic, so you guys can have an idea. Then I proceeded to investigate that girl 
and ran into her FB and all that weird stuff, and the cherry on top came up when she literally ordered me to drop everything and catch the next flight to Spain because her maternal grandpa was dying. When I asked why, she told me that it was my responsibility to be there, and she would not allow for anything else than me being on the next flight. Yeah? Right. I immediately yanked the cord and cut all the ties with her, changed FB accounts and whatnot, boy. She was crazy AF. Account 12. I was in a Boy Scouts-related group with a friend. We're both female. After we graduated high school, she told me how she had been groomed by our troop leader into horrible things. And because he worked in security, he had spied on her and tracked her, and was now stalking her and following her around a few weeks after that. I came home from university classes and my roommates, five tall and strong dudes, notified me that this guy had showed up at our door looking for me. They instantly got a bad vibe, did not let him in, did not tell him anything, and eventually called the police. He was gone by the time I got home, but by their description, it was definitely him. I spent the rest of my college days constantly looking over my shoulder, but I never saw him again. My vigilant roommates never saw him again. Though he used his daughter to try to friend me on Facebook and other social media. What an absolute pervert and creepy weirdo of a pedo. Part 7. Account 1. Was at work. New guy. A few months and a girl took a liking to me when I had helped her with something. She seemed cool, so I thought it would be cool to make friends with her since I was newer around there. We only hung out in group settings, so there was no, like questionable 1.1 things going on. One night she kissed me, and I kind of just told her that I do like hanging out with her and just need some time to think about things before considering moving forward, cause I just wasn't expecting that. She looked angry rather than sad, but didn't make a scene, flash, forward to the next day at work, and she seemed back to normal. No anger or weirdness, so it was all good. Then after work, we're all walking out as a group, and I'm talking to her about how I have a new manager, and she blurts out that they are childhood best friends and that she'll put in a good word for me. That night, the weird threatening texts begin about how she's going to ruin my career if I don't give us a chance, and 20-year-old me was stupid enough to not go right to HR. I didn't really plan to give us a chance, but felt unsafe detaching from the friend group Two days go by and I find out she's telling everyone that we are together. And everyone was all for it without ever really confirming with me. And I started feeling super trapped. For days, she was texting me about how ill be taking her away for the weekend and make our first date such a big thing. That is until about four days after that, I'm in a meeting with my boss and he goes, Who's that girl that keeps skulking around by your cubicle? And I'm like, What do you mean? And he points out the window area, and there she is like, watching my cubicle, me instantly realizing he has no clue who she is, I hand him my phone and go, apparently not your childhood best friend. After all, he reads the messages, walks over to her and chases her away, then walks me to HR. She was ordered to stay away from me while they investigated, and the next day she came in with bandages all over her face and spread a rumor that I did it. For a few days, everyone believed her, until someone mentioned the timelines didn't match up, because when she claimed I did it, I was working a security gig at a concert he went to, I, she was fired after that. Had a couple of years of fallout after that, because, you know, I'm a 6,1 male, so we don't get instantly believed in those scenarios, but I survived it. Account 2. Not that crazy of a story, but I had met a guy on Hinge that I talked to for about a week and a half. He was the first guy I'd ever met online, and he was nice, nerdy, shared a lot of interests. I just ended up getting a really bad feeling about him, and I ended up breaking it off. He tried to guilt me into staying with him, saying stuff like, I was going to give up after you, and I already deleted the app. I stood firm, and for the next two weeks, he stalked me. He sent me a long poem-like message about how we just didn't meet at the right time or something. Then a day or two later, a note was left on my car at home. And occasionally, I'd see his car in the neighborhood. He is friends with my next-door neighbor, but still it was sus. Eventually, I heard nothing. Never saw his car, and I could move on with my life. Didn't use Hinge at all after that low L. Account 3. Fifth and sixth grade. 
I lived two houses away from Donnie. He was in ninth grade and had a crush on me. It started when the house next to mine, Meth House, burned down and the neighborhood kids started playing in the empty lot, usually freeze tag. Donnie would only tag me, wouldn't even try for anyone else, and if he couldn't tag me, he would cry saying his grandpa had just died. The kid would have had like 1,000 grandpas, so to avoid his annoying crying, I let him tag me sometimes, but honestly, it made the game no fun. So we stopped inviting him around. His mom yelled at us for bullying him by excluding him, so we all stopped hanging out. Well, he just started knocking on my door every hour to see if we could come play yet. Sometimes my mom would say we had homework to finish, but most of the time mom made me go out and play with him because she felt bad for him. Then he started looking in my window, face pressed to the screen to see if I was home. I keep my curtains closed all the time now. Mom still made me go play with him. When he could no longer see in my windows, he started giving me little gifts. Rings for when we got married, rings to promise I would be his, heart-shaped candles, poems copied off the internet, heart tattoos and stickers. I'd try to deny them. I tried forgetting them in the empty lot only to find them left on our doorstep. Finally, another older kid, eighth grade, in the neighborhood got tired of Donnie's shit and asked me to bring him everything Donnie had ever given me. He called Donnie over and smashed everything with a hammer in front of him and told Donnie if he didn't leave me alone, he'd be next. Donnie cried and raged at me until he saw the hammer swung in his direction. Not even close enough to hit him, just enough to know this kid meant business. Then he ran home to his mom who yelled at us for bullying him and my mom said we could have let him down a little nicer. Donnie still begged for me to come out and play, but I refused with crying fits until my mom stopped making me go play with him, and we ended up moving the next year. Account 4. I had a stalker in the 7th grade. He stated my address and described my parents. I sat next to him in science, and he had a habit of pissing me off. Whenever I told my mom that he would tell me something about myself I had never shared with him, she just told me he was just guessing. It got to be too much for me when he told me that he would kill my parents and my dog. I was scared shitless. This kid knew my address and what my parents looked like. He could actually kill them, not legally, but still. We emailed my science teacher and asked her to move me to a different table. I was moved and never talked to him again. I was only 12 at the time, so you can imagine how scared I was. I met my best friends at the new table, though. Account 5. An ex? I ended our relationship after he started becoming controlling and abusive. I knew he was stalking me because I'd see him wherever I went. I'd stop at a drive through to get something to eat after work, and he'd be parked in the parking lot, watching the drive through line. I'd go to the mall, and he'd be sitting on a bench. I'd go to a movie with a friend. And when we left, he was sitting in the last row. I'd go to a restaurant with my mom, and he'd be at a table in the corner. This went on for a couple of years. After I met someone else, he started showing up where I lived, would drive by my apartment building, idle his car on the street outside my window. He'd follow people into the gate and be seen walking around the complex. It culminated when he got into my apartment and assaulted me. After that, I moved in with my now husband and the stalking stopped. Years later, I found out that a close friend of mine had been having an affair with him and giving him information about my schedule and movements. That's how he knew where I'd be and when I'd be there, and also when I would be alone in my apartment. About six. In school, I was friends with his sister who went to a different school and didn't live with him because he had issues. When he found out about me, he stalked her. He found out about my class schedule. Same year, different class. He'd be there waiting for me and follow me to my next class, just walking behind me, breathing down my neck. In the big breaks, he'd luckily be in the bathroom doing drugs. For a while, we had philosophy class together, and he'd just sit there at the wall staring at me, banging his head against the wall. Then one day, my friend told me to be careful because he'd texted her. I've never heard him talk a single word. B.W. Something about me. The next day, I got to school late and was greeted by police. There was an attempted shooting by an unnamed person who claimed to only want to shoot one specific person and couldn't find them. So it was ended without anything happening. Never saw him again. Though I did find out that he ended up in prison. 
He'd been on parole already, and that yes, he meant me. Fun times. Account 7. When I was 14, I met a guy on MySpace, as one does, who was 21 already gross, I know. We exchanged phone numbers and talked for a few days before he threw a fit because I told him that I smoked occasionally and called me a burnout and a loser, blah blah. Then, hours later, sent some unwanted, unsolicited nudies and I had to tell him to put that shit away and that I wasn't interested in talking anymore because he made me uncomfortable. We talked for 3.4 days, tops. He continued reaching out, even after I mentioned that he could go to prison for what he sent me and blocked him on everything. For years, he made fake profiles to contact me, wrote me an email that said he tried every combination of my name, Yahoo, Hotmail, Gmail, etc., hoping one of them would belong to me. The scariest incident occurred when I was having lunch with a friend in my city about an hour from where he told me he lived years earlier and I got a text from an unknown number with a picture of the restaurant I was at. That said, was in the area and am thinking about getting lunch here. Care to join me? I searched the number and it was registered in his mom's name. I have never been so creeped out. Thankfully, I think he's moved on. Though, I did get a message request from an account that was consistent with his other fake accounts on Instagram last summer, and I'm 25 now. Eight. This girl accused me of sexually harassing her after I inquired about her crush. Then the next day and several times over the next few months, she sent cops to my dorm room to search for various things like guns and stuff. You know, normal college stuff. Then came the rape accusations. They were actually about my boyfriend being raped. He showed up and denied it, of course. Finally, she tried getting a restraining order because she kept seeing me around 99-acre campus that we both live in. In it, she said I kept trying to contact her when I never did. It's been about two years now, and she spread the story and I got a death threat at one point in the middle of Zoom. I know it sounds like there must be more to it, like I egged her on or something, but no, she's fucking obsessed with me. Recently, she and her friends take over the small Discord server we have for the school. I'm autistic, so I don't talk much to people, and the Discord server was only like five people, who would talk and when she showed up with other people, I admittedly did piss them off for various reasons for which I'd like to apologize. Half the server became her and her friends. She just couldn't let me have it this small respite. She's obsessed with me and I can't do anything about it. Count nine, 18 year old trans, guy here. When I first started transitioning, I was 15. There weren't many queer people in my school. I didn't really care too much about it because I was comfortable with myself. But there was this boy in my year level who had never met a trans person before and slowly became obsessed with me. He would leave anonymous notes saying, your brain intrigues me. And I want to take photos of your body before and after surgeries. It was really weird. Anyways, he started following me home and calling me his Ken, Barbie because I would always explain being trans for me as someone had put a Ken head on a Barbie body, which really started to make me uncomfortable. Not long after I received his 50th note, I was home alone, and he showed up at my front door with a ring and a bunch naked photos of me getting changed in my room. He said to me that he was devoted to me and wanted me to be his forever. I ended up calling the police, and I haven't seen him since. But I've never been so scared for my life, and to this day, I hate being home alone. Account 10. Some dude used to stalk me thinking I didn't know one day I decided to take a, a shortcut. To totally go home from an alley, and didn't have six lads beat him up, and he didn't get his right leg, two rib bones, and his left shoulder broken. Account 11. The night security guard at my uni dorm stalked me, got my campus number, and texted all hours of the night, would send people to my room to bring me down to talk to him at the front desk at three in the morning, weird guy. Seriously creepy, I reported him. Turns out he had done the same thing to a different person at the dorm next to mine. They moved him one dorm over after I filed a complaint instead of firing him. Still angers me to this day. Account 12. He was a customer at a uni cafe I worked at. He would follow me around all the time, wait for me outside classes, linger behind me at the bus stop. Despite my obvious discomfort with it, all my work friends were worried and helped me make complaints to the uni. 
He was given a warning but kept doing it, but I was changing jobs and uni soon anyway, so I just assumed it would go away. After I left, he started turning up randomly to places I was at, movies, clubs, shopping centers. I eventually figured out that even though I'd blocked him on all social media, he was finding me through my friend's posts and photos. Every time me or my friend saw him, we'd tell him to go away and stop stalking me. He'd only leave when we threatened to call the police. The final straw was when he turned up to my job. I was months into my new job. In a whole new town, as a PA for a lawyer, our office was in a high-security building. You needed to swipe your pass at a few different points just to get to the front door. I had been fielding a lot of strange calls for weeks. Just someone breathing down the phone. I had suspicions it was him, so I told my boss about the calls so he was aware. One day I got a call, and after some time of heavy breathing, he said, Hello, it's name, let's hang out today. I told him firmly to leave me alone, otherwise I'd call the police. Why would you do that, I like you? He whispered as he stood right in front of me. He had managed to trick one of the other lawyers to let him up by saying he knew me. I instinctively yelled, What are you doing here? And my boss heard and guessed what was going on and ran to my aid. Pushing the guy out of the office, I was in shock and crying and filed a police report that day. The following day, I received another call at my office. It was the guy's mom. She told me that she was so sorry about what had happened and that I wasn't the first girl he had done this to. She said they were getting him help and taking away his phone and car, and she would ensure he would never contact me again. And I never did hear from him again. But I couldn't walk anywhere alone for a fair few months after that. Account 13. I was stalked by an ex for 18 months. I don't remember the exact moment that I attached the word stalked to what was happening, but it was probably a few months in. Right from when we broke up, he was sending me upwards of 100 texts or emails a day, showing up at my house at any hours of the day and night and just staring in the windows or throwing things to get attention. When I didn't answer my personal mobile, he would call my work phone to figure out if I was in the office or not. I ended up agreeing with my boss that I didn't need to answer any calls from external numbers on my work phone. He was using different phones within his office to get me to pick up because I wouldn't recognize the numbers. He then took to calling the reception and pretending to be customers or delivery companies, asking if I was at my desk. If he found out I was there, he would turn up and wait for me. My organization assigned a security guard to walk me to my car at night to ensure I got safely off the property. I'd park a mile away from my house so that my car wouldn't be outside, and I lived with the curtains closed 100 of the time for months so no one could see in. He also called my parents or friends and would say he has been hospitalized in an accident and needed me to get in touch. It was relentless. After about eight months, I decided to move house and get a new car to have a bit of anonymity again. The texts, emails, and calls didn't stop. I did contact the police about six months in, who told me, incorrectly, his actions weren't illegal. About 18 months in, I contacted the police again after a particularly scary incident, and an officer came out to speak to me. I still remember her reading some of the texts, emails he'd sent, and telling me this was the worst case of stalking she'd seen in her policing career, and that I was going to end up dead if it carried on. That was the first time someone had been really honest with me about how bad the situation was, and I'll always be grateful to her. He was convicted of stalking me in court, handed a sizable community service order and a restraining order, and he's finally gone from my life. Account 14. This motherfucker literally tracked me down on social media and messaged me to tell me that he was watching me at my work. I had no idea who he was, no picture to tell if I'd seen him before. I knew it was true because he described a conversation he'd had with me as a patient, which could have been anyone as I saw hundreds of patients a day. He also described what I looked like at work. He had the audacity to ask me to go on a date with him. Anyway, I blocked him, changed my name on my socials to something less identifiable from my name badge, switched jobs, and haven't heard from him since. Account 15. Dude was my co-worker. My first week I was getting to know people in my department and we found out we lived on the same street. 
He said that he drove into work and offered to carpool sometime. The one and only time I carpooled with him, he told me that he knew the apartment complex I lived at. And I know for a fact, I never mentioned the apartment complex. I also found out that he knew my apartment number. I wanted to jump out of the moving car. The next day, I went straight to the leasing office, and the guy there was like, Oh, I remember him. Yes, he said he was your co-worker and needed to drop something off to you. So I gave him your apartment number. The manager was there, too, and got really upset because I said the guy was stalking me. I told another co-worker who worked in IT, and he told me to report him to HR. I did. Not sure what happened after, but after about a month, I no longer saw him at work.